Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the WHIZ TV Game of the Week. I'm Kevin Rao. This is the coach, Doug Clifford. We are at Morgan as Crooksville comes to town. And, Coach, these teams have been frustrated so far in the season. They're both looking for their first win. I, I think they've pointed to this game to get things right. Well, you could call this the Hungry Eyes Bowl, that's for sure. Both teams uh, still looking for that first win in, in week five of the season. That means nothing really good has happened to you, your team since August 1st. That's a long stretch, stretch to go without something happy happening. And One team will go home uh, smiling tonight, and one team won't. Well, and they, they both desperately need this game tonight. They're going to play hard. We had a chance to talk first to Crooksville head coach Casey Valley. He talks about this game and the fact – it's the 100th year of Crooksville football. You know, I mean, I played under Coach Spring, um, under Coach Clifford. Um, and, it, you know, playing here and, and having success back in the days in the 90s and the early 2000s, um, coming back to do this, there was some pressure. But it's also uh, pretty good support in the community. Um, you know, having, having your back. I know they want the wins. Uh, it's not all about the wins sometimes. It's about getting things back on track. I think our kids um, have gotten their self out in the community, done things the right way. Um, now, now the wins just have to come. I mean, I think we're on, we're on good track. So, uh, you know, th this being the 100th, 100th edition of uh, Crooksville football, uh, there were some high expectations. Obviously, we've uh, started out of the gate uh, very slowly, but that has to do with a very tough schedule. Uh, first four games, probably three playoff teams um, and a very good Warren team. So um, week five, you know, I hope we can get on track, um, you know, make something of the season. We, we, we have uh, 13 seniors currently. Um, and, you know, they, they come out, they play. They're competitive. So um, I'm sure tonight they're going to be ready to go. You know, for the most part, you know, three, three and a half out of four games, they give it to you all. You know, there, there, was, a, there was a little part uh, here and there. But uh, these guys, they've been around. They want to win. You know, they've been playing for four years. We got – four-year starters out there that got thrown into it when they were freshmen and uh, you know they also they, they're showing the younger kids you know what it what it is to lead um, we don't have one certain leader uh, these guys are pretty pretty close group and uh, you know they, they they go together so Morgan has some good athletes um, I know last year they had the uh, I believe it was a Walters kid that was quarterback and we saw on film they've made a change uh, uh, we don't know what we're gonna see um, going into Friday night um, but we do know they have some athletes. Um, scored some points, obviously, last week. Uh, they're a very hungry team, very, you know, coached by a youthful, exciting coach. So we know it's going to be competitive when we get down there. They're going to be hungry. They're 0-4, we're 0-4. Coach, that is a player in Casey Valley that you coached right. and then had on your staff. If they play with his intensity, they'll be in good shape. Exactly. Uh, Casey played – tailback and defensive end. I coached when he played defense. And, and uh, I know what kind of player he was. And I remember they strapped a shoulder harness on his uh, shoulder so he could keep playing. Uh, when we had to have a yard, we gave it to him. He's that kind of kid. And, well, uh, you could sense that intensity when we talked to him. We also had a chance to talk to Chase Bowman, the head coach of the Morgan Raiders. And he is definitely looking for his team to put things together tonight. Obviously, some of the people I work with now, um, knew me when I was that age, and not that I'm a totally different person now, but I'm not exactly the same person I was when I was 17. Um, so maybe it's an adjustment for me or them, um, just kind of how my priorities changed in the last 15 years, um, just like everybody's does. Um, but for me, I mean, the, the good thing, I, it's a, for me it's really exciting to try to change the culture and change the program in a positive way here, specifically at Morgan High School. Um, you know, you know, I'm a coach. Uh, obviously, I'd want to do a really good job where I, wherever I'm at. But to me, it just kind of holds a special place in my heart uh, to be able to do this job. We're trying to find ourselves, I think, as, as a team and as leaders. Um, I think this group of kids, they're really wanting to be good leaders and they're wanting to do the right things, um, which I've stressed to them. If you want to get to where you want to be, if you want to be a good football team, you have to do the right stuff leading up to it. I think offensively, finally last week we got it going a little bit because um, we have some kid. We have, you know, a quarterback. Actually, a couple quarterbacks. Honestly, who can throw the ball pretty well. Uh, we made a quarterback change last week um, and put our previous starting quarterback uh, mixed him in at running back and receiver. Um, we have some receivers who are pretty athletic and can catch the ball. 
Um, you know, I think the improvement we need to make is in the run game offensively. That's not been very good. Uh, so if we're able to get a little bit of a run game to go in with that, I think we could be pretty dangerous offensively. Well, that Miller kid, that quarterback, is pretty good. Um, no question about that. So you know, we, we have to develop a game plan to make sure we try to keep him contained uh, the best we can, um, try to make him uncomfortable the best we can. You know, these two coaches, uh, you pointed out to me, Coach, played at their respective schools when they had good programs going. You know they'd like to build that culture back. Well, you bet. They're, they're two young men meeting almost at the exact time in, uh, in history. Both teams haven't had a, you know, a win this year, so and they're both trying to accomplish the same thing. So it should be a good game. Let's take a look at uh, action around the MVL tonight. Uh, the big one, Coach Philo at Tri-Valley. Can Philo bounce back after a tough loss last week? Well, they had the blueprint from their game last week. John Glenn did. Did just that. So um, I'm sure that uh, the coaching staff at Philo, I mean, they're experienced. They're, they're, not, they're not rookies. I'm sure they'll have their kids ready. And, and uh, Tri-Valley is going to play a, play a good game to beat them. Well, we'll look forward to that. Let's take a look at the standings going into the game tonight. You can see Sheridan and Tri-Valley both – Looking uh, to keep their perfect record going tonight. Maysville, Philo, New Lex, John Glenn, only one loss. Uh, we're far from determining a champion, Coach. Well, all those teams with one loss, they're always going to cheer for somebody to knock off an undefeated team until they get their shot at them. So, you know, we could end up with a, a, a three- or four-way tie for first in the NBL unless somebody just gets past the competition. And I think that upper half of the league looks pretty even. Now, before we let you go, we have one more piece of Tate uh, when we had a chance to talk to Casey Valley yesterday. So we'll end with that. Our game tonight we'll be able to see tomorrow at 1030 on WHIZ TV. But let's leave you with that last piece of interview with head coach Casey Valley at Crooksville. Talk, talk about your relationship with Coach um, Yeah, you know. we all love him, but yes. I want to hear from somebody else. Yes, I mean, I, I got to uh, – I got to see it in many ways of, uh, as a player, you know, four years, every defensive night spending with him. Um, great coach, great character, you know, that was, uh, yeah, you know, it was fun, it was fun. Uh, you know, I got to coach with him. You know, what he did after that, you know, going to the playoffs and stuff like that. You know, he, he, he wasn't a Crooksville guy, but he was a Crooksville guy, you know. He was a, he, he was a Wilmington there guy. <laughs> Welcome to the Century National Bank High School Football Game of the Week on WHIZ-TV, presented by Century National Bank. Whatever's on your project list, let's talk loans. In today's game, the Morgan Raiders try to fight off the Crooksville Ceramics. This is the Century National Bank High School Football Game of the Week, and brought to you in part by Kokona's Furniture and Masters First in South Zanesville. Zanesville and Route 79, just south of Heath, always making it easier for you to furnish your home by Fink's Quality Cars and RVs, Fink's Harley-Davidson, Fink's Southside Collision, and Fink's Easy Leasing and Rental. By Norvell's Hearing Centers in Zanesville and Cambridge, always here for you. By Denny's Classic Diner, and by Foxfire Schools, free public alternative education serving students grades K through 12. Scoreboards are provided by the Fink's family of motor vehicles and services with instant replay coverage, courtesy the Ohio Educational Credit Union. 24-7 banking, convenience wherever and whenever you need it. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the WHIZ TV Game of the Week brought to you by Century National Bank. Kevin Rao, along with the coach, Doug Clifford, we are in McConnellsville, beautiful Morgan County as the Morgan Raiders host the folks from Crooksville. Yes. I'm waiting for you to fill that in, man. Well. As a former head coach there, a legend in the town of oh, Crooksville. Oh, yeah, I'm a legend, yeah? all right. No doubt about that. Now, the Crooksville Ceramics on the I road tonight. This, this is a pretty heated game. Uh, it's a pretty heated rivalry when I was at Crooksville. Well, and they've got reason to be rivals tonight. They're both trying to get their first win of the season. And they both know they're a little better than that. They've got a little chip on their shoulders. And both we had a chance to talk to both coaches coming into this week, and they felt like, you know, this this had to happen. 
And so we'll see if that's reflected in the play. Crooksville will have it first. Grabbing it is their quarterback and also return guy, Caden Miller. Talking to Coach Casey Valley, Coach, he said Caden Miller might be in the top three athletes in the league. Well, he missed an entire season of participation. He hurt his knee early in the season last year in football and missed every sport. So I'm sure he's anxious to play, but I may have to uh, go down at halftime and talk with Coach Valley and say, you know, he's your starting quarterback with a bum knee. Don't you have another volunteer to return the kickoff? <laughs> Something mean, tells me that his quarterback wants to I mean, be out he, there. Did uh, did he lose a bet? I mean, <laughs> come on. And it, and it is the quarterback, Caden Miller, the senior. He's in a fake, but they bump, a little bump with his running back. I think it was going to be a fake, and he was going to throw a quick – or was going to try to hit a quick throw into the flag. You see there just – Running back knew that it wasn't coming him, and behind him was David Chapman, a junior. So a loss on the play of three on the miscommunication or the air. Really running the same play. Miller going to have to get outside, let it go. He's got a receiver, but not able to hang on is Ethan Sprankle. Well, that was a great ad lib by Miller that time. Pressure's coming in from both sides. He scrambles to the outside. His receiver goes to an open spot, does everything right except catch the ball. You and I were at practice yesterday in Crooksville, and they, they practice in the park on Thursdays. Right. And we had a chance to, to watch Miller because we didn't get a chance to see him last year, obviously, with the injury. And he has a live arm, whether he's running around or in the pocket. Yes, he does. We're going to see here. He's going to go deep. He's got two guys. I, something tells me that's not the way they drew it up. Well, that was a pretty uh, modest start for the ceramics. Fumbled the uh, handoff exchange on first down, dropped the pass on second down, and had two receivers that could have touched each other if they just stuck their arms out. So that well, was obviously a mistake. And the reason you don't do that, Coach, as we all know, is because you bring a whole bunch of defenders <laughs> right. to the party. You bring the wrong crowd with you. So looking to punt it away will be the ceramics. Low snap on the ground. Trying to run for his life now, and they'll turn it over on downs. Another mistake in the first possession. Had a almost, well, they had a fumble. They were able to jump back on. But this time, the punter, Noah Dickerson, low snap, not able to corral it right away, and Morgan's in business. Well, that does not speak well for the Strammers to be prepared for this game. I mean, mentally, they were not in any of those first four plays. I mean, there was a mistake on each play. So we'll see if the Raiders can capitalize on that. And we can, we've seen they can score points, so the Raiders are knocking at the door. Ceramic 20-yard line. Gabe Altier will be the quarterback. He's a junior. In the backfield with him, Lucas Waters and Colton Young. And no quarterback just going to hang on. Now a late flip and a couple of yards on the play. And you can see, did a good job of disguising that he still had the option to pitch it. Boy, yeah, the ball was tucked uh, under his right arm. It looked like it was going to be a quarterback keep uh, for sure. And he, the last second, he, he pitched it to Colton Young. And pushing him out of bounds was Brady Brannon, senior defensive back. I watched the pregame. Both teams have place kickers that can uh, put a field goal through. Well, we've seen a bunch around the league this year, haven't we? We certainly have. Really good. Throw close to the sticks. Right, maybe just a half a yard short, but a good pass. Rolling to his left, grabbing the football was Adam Nicewanger. Well, Altier could have done, he could have done anything he wanted on this play. There was no outside contain on the pass rush. He had the perimeter. Uh, he could have ran that ball for probably just as much yards, but he put the ball right on the money. Nice gain. Third and no, less than a yard. Got to get to about the 10 and a half. They're at the 11. Out here going to go under center, sneak it, and he'll have the first down as he gets inside the 10. It'll be first and goal to go. What well, a great start for the Raider offense. They've executed on three straight plays. First down, new set of downs. Now First and goal from the nine. You'll see out there Lucas Waters 
another junior. He had been playing quarterback, but they switched it up now to go to Gabe Altier. But Waters, a, a, such a good player and so vital a part of this team, he's out there as a running back now. That really opens a can of worms for the Kirksville defense when you have two quarterbacks in the back. Exactly, and they're back there right now. Waters to the right, and he'll get the handoff, a little counterplay, and he'll get into the end zone. He's going to score, and he's going to draw a flag. He's going to get a celebration yep. penalty, which I would imagine Crooksville will take no, on it's the going to be a penalty. He's going to be on Crooksville, Kevin. Oh, it is. The late hit in the end zone. He well, was almost to the end line and got popped. Watch this hit. Boom. Oh, yeah, there's no reason there. I, frankly, was looking down right at that. That was, that was later than even yep. to watch the play. Yep. And, yeah, they will take – so it does go in favor of Morgan, and they'll take it on the kickoff. So, but Crooksville needs to shake off the whatever they wow. brought with them because on the offensive side, as you pointed out, Coach, some early mistakes, and then on defense, just not really getting it done. Morgan pretty easily into the end zone. Crooksville seemed to have some problem on the edges there, Coach. Well, on that, yes, they did. There was no one on the edge on the. Uh, the one pass play that, that all tier through for a gain of nine and or a gain of six. And then on that running play, I mean, it, I don't think anybody even come close to touching waters until he was hitting the end zone. Kick is up. It looks to be good. The Raiders have come to play. Jordan Reigns is a kicker, and he gets it through. And just like that, it's seven to nothing. We'll take a quick break as Morgan takes advantage of some good defense on their part, a short field and then the touchdown. So Morgan on their first drive on a short field, takes it in, converts on the extra point lead at seven to nothing here at home. Kevin Rao and the coach Doug Clifford with you tonight. And Morgan uh, during the touchdown run, a penalty against Crooksville for some unsportsmanlike conduct. And so moving the ball up 15 yards to kick it off will be Jordan Reigns, their junior kicker, and the rest of his Raider teammates. I'd call that a tale of two cities, and my eighth grade <laughs> language arts teacher, Miss Eckler, would be very proud of me for saying That's that. That's very nice. That you have right. some Dickens in your soul. Oh, baby. How about that? Kick away, and if it gets into the end zone, and it does, you can't return those. In high school football, that'll come out to the 20-yard line. And Crooksville, we'll see if they will be able to put themselves together. That first drive, Coach, not what you wanted to see if you were a ceramic fan. Well, uh, Coach Valley might need to open up a, uh, a case of smelling salts over there and, and take one under everybody's nose. So we'll see if they react to that. They know Huddle come right up to the line of scrimmage behind their quarterback, Caden Miller. They like to play uh, high-tempo football. We'll see if they can come out the second possession and execute a little better. Running out of the pistol. Going to hand off right up the middle. And three yards on the play for Tyler Carr. 5'9", 145-pound running back. Gerald Newman, uh, big sophomore, 5'9", 225, anchors that defensive line right there at the nose tackle position. And he put an end to that one after a three-yard gain. Whoa. And this one going to be a loss on the play. Well, it looked like number 58 plugged to play, Landon Pettit. But I want you to know, number 99, he came down that line big time and made a collision. He has good movement. Again, talking about Jarrell Newman. And tell you, you get a big guy like that that can move his feet like that, that is a dangerous combination. As an old center, I did not want to see those guys. <laughs> Long pass, receiver down there, but good coverage by Adam Nicewanger. Make it fourth down now and about eight. Well, you'll see Adam has perfect position this time on the receiver. I mean, he doesn't get beat deep. He's on his outside shoulder, and he could have easily have come back. The ball was short, and had it been just a little shorter than that, he'd have had to pick off. Pass was intended for Brady Brannon. But another three and out for Crooksville. Last time I had trouble with the snap. This time all the way back. 
pretty good rush. And I think the pressure causes a short punt that actually bounces back toward the ceramics. And good field position for the second straight time for Morgan as they'll have it at the Crooksville 37. Well, that was Gerald Newman applying that pressure right up the middle. Again, I'll tell you, when I was playing center and there were guys like that, oh. it took about one play for me to lean to the guy to my right going, could you help me out with this guy? <laughs> you bet. <laughs> He's that kind of player. And to do that on a punt from the middle of the field is pretty good. Because you can't hit the center, so you got to go around him. Usually that's a tougher road to hoe. Exactly. So first and 10, Morgan the football and the seven-point lead here in the first quarter. In motion, Waters. Out here going to roll that way. Has Waters and catch a catch. Little, no, I'm sorry, that's not Waters. That is Colton Young. Well, Ran a little wheel along that route. Yep, the motion man comes across and put three receivers on the same side. They all ran different levels. And wow. He knocked that down with one hand, then yes, brought it in. Nice reception by the senior Colton Young. Tackle and a big first down. It's first and goal again from the nine yard line. Cade Miller on a tackle. Yeah, they staggered him nicely there, though. You had to, you had to choose if you were the defensive back. Well, he let he let his receivers, you know, routes, you know, develop it. Wait till one came open and put the ball right on the money. Nice pass. So they'll readjust after getting the call from the sideline once they saw. And nope, they want to get a something better in there. They're going to take a timeout. We will take it. Morgan, first and goal from the nine. Last time they had this, they scored the touchdown to lead at seven nothing. We'll have more action right after this. First and goal from the nine for the second time tonight. Morgan scored from this position. First drive, they won't get the score this time, but they'll move the ball a couple of yards as Lucas Waters runs it into the middle of the field and picks up a, we'll give him a couple down to the seven. Second and goal, as you can see, good active play by the Crooksville interior line there, Coach. Linebacker stepped up, had good down the line pursuit from the lineman. Good defensive play. That may be their best defensive player of the night. They got a big fellow in the middle there, too. Branson Wisson, 6'2", 282. So you got to get past him. Fake. Out here. Finds room. He's got a player in the back end. Did he get him? No, they're going to say he did not hang on to the football. Well, I think one referee is going to signal a touchdown. And Let's one see. They're going to get together. I think, there was, I think the referee on the far sideline said he caught the ball. The referee behind him said he didn't. See what, what happens here. Carson nope. Mayle was the receiver. And the, well, let's watch it here, Coach. We'll no see catch. what the play is. Good nice step by the in. Man. Yep. Linebacker turns him back to the inside. And he's bobbling and a little bit. I think bit. he bobbled it and it popped out. Yeah. I don't think he ever had possession. I don't think he had a complete possession of the football. That'll make a third down and goal. Good camera work, fellas. Thanks for that. Three wide receivers to the wide side. See if they come back here to the lone receiver on the right. Going to nope. roll him left again. He's got oh a receiver out the flat, oh. and it will be an easy touchdown. Kobe Hodge, the junior, on the reception from actually eight yards out, and Morgan a two-score lead just like that, Coach. Well, the inside guy goes goes out. The two other receivers ran across the middle. Nobody picked him up in the flat. Busted coverage. And just kind of ran behind as the other guys ran out of his way. He came in behind it. So Hodge with the touchdown. Kick is away, and it is good as Reigns gets his second of the night. And Morgan here at home still with 7-17 left to go in this first quarter. And they jumped out to the 14-0 lead. More after this. Welcome back to Morgan County in beautiful McConnellsville. And I mean that because it is a great setting here as Morgan grabs a 14-0 lead. Short kick. 
taken by Caden Miller, and he's going to get some running room up the middle. Best field possession for the ceramics to start a drive, and we're going to get some flags late. A lot of them. Well, that was a late. That must be a really late hit because those flags came in after Miller was already getting up off the ground. Yeah, they and there are three of them laying down there, so whoever did it uh, was pretty obvious about it. It's going to be a personal foul against Crooksville, and I'll tell you, they just, right now, the ceramics keep shooting themselves in the foot, and again, whatever you did, you did so that three of the refereeing staff saw you. I mean, I, it was... Uh... It was a nearly unanimous call there. Three out of the five referees saw that and threw the flag immediately. So instead of good field position, it goes back to the 24-yard line, and that's where Crooksville will start this drive, trailing 14 to nothing. And referee going back to talk to Caden Miller about whatever his crew is doing so that they don't find themselves in this spot again. Jet sweep. And not a lot there. Getting the ball was Colt White. Got some good speed, but this Morgan defense has started out well. They look well prepared. They look like they've uh, memorized the scouting report. They haven't been surprised by anything Kirksville has shown. They've had their receivers covered in the, in, in the running game. I think that's about the longest gain of the night right there. And now again it was Jarrell Newman working laterally down the play. Throw out in the flat is complete. And it'll get out to about the 30, a lot more manageable third down play coming up. As grabbing it was Colt White who just ran in a play ago. Now receives one. Coach Valley told me that Caden Miller has uh, 900 yards passing. They have three receivers with 20 or more catches. Uh, they need to uh, they need to get that part of their game going. I think they'll be fine, but they can't get any further behind or it's going to be too late. Waters and Pettit with the tackle in the flat. Play action. And what a nice reception. Wow. Beautifully framed out there by Tyler Rambo. That was you can an see. outstanding catch. Good protection that time. The tackle peels back. Picks off the closest guy to Miller. Uh, Great hands out there. Brought that ball into his body as he rolled over onto his back. That's a nice catch. That's what Crooksville needed right there. Get a first down. But again, Rambo, that's a good use of hands right there. And in the middle and trying to counter that rush that's been getting into Miller quickly. And he gets it in the little slant to Colt White. I like the play calling. I mean, it's take advantage of the, of the quick passing game. Miller's got a quick release. Receivers get open. He, he throws it. Miller pursued from behind, and he'll go down. The guy that tripped him up initially was Caden Williams. Outstanding. I'd like to see that move on, on tape again because he got past his the blocker immediately. I and mean, there was just no hesitation. He was in the, in the backfield. Well, here he comes. He's, He's unblocked. He was kind of a delayed yes, blitz from that outside. That outside linebacker position to kind of let things develop. If you don't have a back back there for protection, well, you're, you're a sitting duck, that's for sure. Brady White. Finished off the tackle. Now it's third and seven is a loss of four on that play. Miller looking deep over the middle and made his intended receiver, Ethan Sprankle, turn around and couldn't get to the football. So to be fourth down, let's see what Crooksville wants to do at their 41. You know, you're 0 and 4, down 14 here early. Nothing would surprise me. Try to get your squad going, but it looks like they are going to punt it away. Well, Morgan has, has two touchdowns, and both their possessions have been started in ceramic territory. I think one at about the 40 and the other one at the 20, so maybe the ceramics can change the field position here and, and get the ball back and take it down for a score. Noah Dickerson back for his third punt of the night, actually a second. This one a good one over the middle. Received and lucky to hang on because he bobbled just a little bit was Adam Nicewanger. It was a nice job, though. I mean, he saved his team about you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 yards of field position by fielding that punt. And really good to be able to hang on to because he got that kind of <laughs> off his shoulder. Oh, baby. He saw the guys coming. Yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. And I, you don't blame him for that. 
Uh, well, we've got a timeout on the field. We're going to take it as the clock in this first quarter winding down. Morgan leads it by a couple of touchdowns here at home. Welcome back, Kevin Round, the coach, Doug Clifford, with you tonight. Morgan with the ball and the lead here in the first quarter. Coach, this this could be a drive where you can put your foot down a little bit. Oh, baby, you bet it. You, these guys can take a shot here at any time. They're going to run the ball. And running room up the middle. A big chunk on first down eight yards if you're for calling, White. If you're calling the defense right now for Kirksville, you have no clue as to what. Morgan's going to do because they have every weapon at their disposal. They can run it, they can throw it. I mean, you can't load up on the pass rush. I mean, you're two scores down, you can't afford to give up another touchdown. So right now it's advantage for the guys wearing blue. And they've had a couple of different quarterbacks, so they got guys that can throw out of this, run out of this. This time the Crooksfield defensive line will Push back just a little bit and a loss of a yard on that run by White. I think a linebacker saw a guard pull, read that read. I mean, that's guards take you to the football. When they pull and go across, they're not just doing that for fun. One of the guys, Braden Cavaney, was pushing some folks around. Yep. Read that key and ran right to the ball. Guards will take you to the football. So third down and about four, long three. High in the air, coverage downfield. Did he hang on? That's a catch. He did, and that was good coverage too. But down at the 30 yard line, pulling it in was Carson Mayle. He almost had a touchdown in the last drive. Well, we're gonna see Colt White is about four yards behind the receiver here. And he kind of he kind of gains it there at the last because the ball is on a rainbow arc. But that was the uh, Cardinal sin for defensive back. Never got his head turned back around. Yeah. Didn't turn that head around, got beat deep. But you know what he did that was good? It was just that the receiver was a little bit better That's on that. Right. He played where his hands were right. and went after the ball. Yes, he did. But Mayo just pulled that one out of the air and hung on to it. It's almost like a rebound. Comes a blitz. And they're going to roll and look. And now some backside pressure. But Altier getting away. He's going to run out of real estate. All right. Stramick's making a nice play of that time. They contained the quarterback on the, to the left side. He turned back around. And Pass rush caught up with him. Brady Brandon was the guy. Grabbed a whole lot of jersey. As you can see here, he's got a hold, not letting go, and then he gets some help. But he took a little punishment himself as he made that play. But a big loss on the sack back to the 38-yard line. Well, here's an opportunity now that the ceramics have uh, – that's probably the most positive play of the night for them right now on either side of the ball. It's going to be second down and 18. It's a great opportunity here. I mean, I'm sure Morgan figures here in four down territory. They might be able to, you know, get a stop here and get decent field position. Altier looks to run it all the way. He throws it. That's actually oh, a pass. Well executed. But good defense by the ceramics. Can he? Some people say we well, can't do that. We always used to yell in the backyard, forward lateral. And of course, there is no such thing. You can throw it underhanded, sideways, and any way you want. Ca Braden Cavani took the quarterback on that option. Cade Miller had to pitch back. I mean, that's just uh, just like you draw it up in summer camp, how to cover the option. So a loss on that play of another five yards. So second, no, third down now and 23. Two outstanding plays by the ceramic defense here. Now it's uh, boy, third and a bunch. This is a good time. Don't let the, court, the receiver catch it behind you. Keep it in front of you. Blitz coming. Throw over the middle. He's got a receiver. It's going to be knocked down. Going stride for stride was Kobe Hodge for Morgan. And good defense back there again by Brady Brandon. Brady Brandon, perfect position on the outside shoulder. Ball is delivered on the money. Brandon had Brandon, had Brandon been a, a foot farther back from that receiver, that would have been a reception. Nice play that time by Brady. They're looking to punt for the first time tonight is Morgan, and that is a big stop for Crooksville. We got timeout called on the field. Referee's going to talk to each other. We may need to change the clock a little bit. We'll see. By the way, Coach, I want to talk about these folks down at Morgan take care of us, don't they? Oh, my goodness. You know, 
I want to say thanks to April because if, yeah, if, putting the food, just the food together was fantastic. And they are going to reset the clock here just a little bit. I don't know if, if, if you kind of give me a line to, to lead me into the conversation, and folks, if I don't respond, it's because my mouth's full of food. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, just I mean, right behind I mean, us. It's, it's right the, behind yeah. I mean, I can reach and touch it right now, and this this hot pepper jelly stuff. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I may be spending a week at the Betty Ford Clinic. Kick is taken at about the 12. Good defense right down there, however, by Morgan. Crowd appreciates the effort here in McConnellsville. It's Cole White not able to get a lot more, but that was a huge stop for Crooksville. That yes, time it around. was. They needed to stop the bleeding there for sure. It's a great defensive stand that time. Uh, yeah, I would have given Morgan three or four more plays because they were getting farther and farther away from the goal line, but they did punt the ball away. as a smart move by uh, Coach Bowman not to get foolish and go for that with a two-touchdown lead. Change that field position. Right now, Alex Stramsher, now they're starting deeper than they have all night. They're in, what, 10-yard line? Yeah, ball set up on the 10. They better execute now. Again, working out of the pistol. They had some running room up the middle this time. Almost five yards on the carry. And good push up front. That time gave him a nice seam. Good straight ahead dive to David Chapman. Five yards, second down and five. And there you saw on blocking on that one, Andrew Peterson. And that will get a, another running play to be just a couple of yards this time. But sometimes you're, if the defensive guy on the line just starts to run away from you, just keep pushing him the way he's going. Get him out of the play, but good defense that time. Yes, it was. One of the first guys there, Dan Toki, just a it's, sophomore. That's Tokai. Is it Tokai? It's Tokai. I count on you for these pronunciations because you know these families. I had you set up for that one. I knew yeah, you'd you blow did. that. I knew you'd blow that, and I couldn't wait. <laughs> Sidestepping and leaning forward, but I don't think he got there, Coach. I don't think so. Well, Dan Tokai's father is Adam Tokai, who – Played at Crookstown. Okay. Well, you know, I'm glad you're here for a lot of reasons. Not so much that one, but okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for that. Fourth so, in a yard. What do you think, Coach? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I see some. Uh, There's time called on the field. Let's see what's. we got a lot of players uh, running on and off. I think the referee wanted to make sure that everybody. Yep. That they got all the re once one team well, substitutes think, everybody can. They're gonna try to draw them off sides. No, nope. they're gonna. Oh, there it's a, that was a gonna be a quarterback keep right up the middle. Crookshill yeah. called timeout. Well, we are gonna take the time as we are inside a minute to go in this action-packed first quarter. And Crooksville trying to decide to go for it or not, deep in their own territory. Back after this. Wow. Fourth and one. Risky Brooke. call here. And they're going to give it and to. they're not going to get oh, it. Oh, I don't know. He leaned at the he end. He leaned. Ball came out. I think the ball, I think the, his knee was down, and, and he, I think he's short. Yeah, I do too. And you got a referee who's down on his knee marking the spot, and it is not there. Not even close. You know, Miller that time hesitated just a moment, and I think that's what got it. Because this Morgan front, we'll see it here, Coach. They are, and what you see sneaking behind there. Yep. That's what did it. That down line backside pursuit is that those are the guys that make the play. If the guys on the front side can stand the offensive line up, and that's what happened that time. And the guys from the backside poured down the line of scrimmage, made the play. Great effort by the Morgan Raiders. I mean, Kershaw needed less than a yard, and they could not get it. So another short field for Morgan, already up 14 to nothing. Sweep coming right side, and nothing there. In fact, losing uh, half a yard. No, they'll, they'll get him back to the strike. It'll be second and 10. And Kershaw's defense has toughened up. I mean, they're, they're making some good plays now. It's been a while since Morgan had a positive yardage play. And before it was, you know, every play was golden. So the defense is playing better, but they're just in a tough spot. I mean, they're definitely in four down territory here. No doubt, but 
again, a nice defensive push, not letting the, the runner, in this case, Colton Young, get outside. Young will head to the left side this time, see if he gets the pitch. He does, and Crooksville going to make him pay for it. Caden Miller is out there on the pitch back. Outstanding coverage on the option. It was to the wide side that time instead of the short side. Crooksville's having none of that. In fact, they're going to lose all the way back to the 31, a loss of 11. Oh, no, that's not right. Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> it is back at the 31. Ball came out late there, but already down. And that will do it for this first quarter as Morgan wants to go over and pull themselves together with a third and long coming up. Crooksville defense turned them away last time, trying to do the same thing here. We'll take a timeout. Morgan, a couple of touchdowns in the first quarter to lead it, 14 to nothing. We begin the second quarter. Morgan, a pass into the flat complete. It's going to make it a fourth down and about four yards to go. Nice pass, however. Altair has the luxury tonight of throwing to receivers that are, have been wide open many times, and that, that, that was the case that time. Kobe Hodge was the receiver. Good play call. Didn't try to get all the yardage on one play. Now it's fourth. Receiver goes down. Defensive back just kind of let, let him go, stayed up shallow in the flat. No one was in the flat in front of him, but he had to contain the quarterback. And you can't do both. You can't cover and contain. Well, they're going to go for it. Altier likes rolling left, and he's going to run out of room on the ground. Doesn't really matter because wherever, wherever it ends up, it's going to be Crooksville's ball on the fourth down play. And the ceramic defense, again, gaining more yards than the offense is right now. Well, it looks to me like Crooks is going to have their, their best field position. Nice hit that time, number 15 for Crooksville. Tyler Carr. Yeah, he was a he, that was a 100-yard dash from it his was. from his edge. And the Ceramics will have a pretty good field position out at the 30-yard line and Morgan has driven it the last two times deep into Crooksville territory and the Ceramic defense has pushed him away. Double reverse. Couple of blocks out front, but he oh. cut out, maybe should have cut in. Well, oh, that looked like a rodeo tackle out there. Let's see on the replay, see there he thought about cutting in, but ends up not. And on the tackle was Colson Cook. I know that young man. Yeah? Yep, his father played at. Crooksville. You betcha. Yeah. <laughs> His father's Matt Cook. Uh, I'll tell you what, he showed some good speed right there for a big fella. Miller thought about throwing it quickly. Instead, we'll come out here. We're going to get a uh, flag thrown. I think a lineman got downfield. Would have been a first down just beyond the stick on second and long, but penalty against Crooksville. And again, they just cannot get going. And it is an yep. ineligible receiver downfield. Five yard penalty and we'll do it all again on second down. Well, it's a nice job here by Miller. He felt the rush coming, scrambled to the outside. Found a guy running an open spot. It's a nice job that time. Rambo found that spot on the sideline, sat down, waited for the ball. Miller hit him in the chest with it, all for nothing. So now it's going to be second down and more than 20. Quick bubble screen. Looking for some room on the other side of the field, and he runs into a tackle. Wow. Because right there was Brady White. Nice job that time by the Morgan defense to stay home. They have him corralled over there at the point of attack. Good pursuit. And White well, did a good know, job. To when you're running that direction and your best blocker is your quarterback, boy, things – Things don't look good for if you're carrying the <laughs> they, ball. They're not. They're not going as you had it up on the whiteboard right <laughs> no. there. Nope. So third down and a bunch. Twenty-six yards to go for a Crooksville first down. Well, aided by a penalty, but this still is a great response right now by the the Morgan defense. I mean, they have Crooksville bottled up. Yeah. 
They hold him on this down. I mean, it's, oh, gee whiz, what is it? Third and 26. 20. Wow. Yep. I mean, you can afford to give up a little bit of yardage on this and uh, just make a tackle. I mean, that's what you tell your defensive players. Just make the tackle. If they catch it in front of you, no big deal. Just make the tackle. Referees, a little bit of a huddle now. They're ready to go. These defensive have been pushing the off on both sides back further than their offenses have been gaining as of late. Miller going to have an empty backfield. Okay, I'm going to find we're waiting a for. young Tokai. See if he makes a big play. <laughs> you just keep rubbing it in. That's all you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> I, I deserve it, no so it's all right. Casey Valley will tell you there's no such thing as a cheap shot. Yeah. <laughs> Just shots. Miller was looking left, can't help. Flag thrown. He's got a receiver. But he saw some fellas come in his direction, not able Ooh. to hang on. And yeah. I think we're going to get a hold on Crooksville that will be declined, my guess is. Landon Pettit was drawing a bead on that receiver. And, and <laughs> I think the receiver felt the pressure, felt his eyeballs, because he wanted no part of catching that ball coming back over the middle. Yeah, Brady Brandon was the guy out there. He was trying to snatch it and grab it back and lean backwards. And instead now it'll be fourth down and 26. And Crooksville will look to punt it away again. See, this Morgan defense has been impressive, Coach. Yes, it has. They've risen to the occasion. They made big plays. They've stopped trick plays. They've dominated the field position game uh, for the entire game. Kirksville punting deep again. Look out. Look out. Kick taken at the look 48. Out. Some running room and a block, but Kirksville, good defense to get down the field. We're going to get a penalty as well. On the tackle was Ethan Sprankle as Adam Nicewonger tried to Reverse field. I'm sure that Coach Bowen was going to talk to uh, Adam and say, you know, put that right foot in the ground and get up the field and get, get five yards. You know, we used to talk about head for the nearest sideline. We got a lot of people over there. <laughs> so we'll may have a penalty in addition to that. Oh, it is a block in the back. And Spot foul will go take it back inside Morgan territory down to about the 47. But still good field position for the Raiders. Yes, it is. Already ahead in this one, 14 nothing. And tell you what, they've had two other drives they could have put points on the board. Right, so well, this, Crooksville lucky it's 14 to nothing right now. You bet. This is a win win situation for Morgan. They can get down here with a short field, maybe get another score. If they get stopped and they decide to punt, that means Crooksville is going to be starting deep in their territory again. Handoff will go to Waters. And he's able to cut it. There's some north and south for you there, Coach. Yes, it was. Nice job. Put that foot in the dirt. Cut that thing up. Kirksville had it cut off to the outside. You'll see the pursuit flow to the outside. This was called not keeping leverage if you're on defense. Yep. You over pursue and you cannot go back. If you're even with the man in your pursuit when you're going laterally, you're then in he, trouble. he has the advantage. Yep. You bet. Because he can cut back or he can keep going and and uh, you're in a good position to, to miss the tackle. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, if you're, if I was ever lucky enough as a nose tackle to pursue, keep, <laughs> I was going to keep that in so well, mostly because I right. wasn't going to get outside I, him. But I, uh, I made some pursuit <laughs> angles from that nose tackle spot. You know, you just try to get that inside shoulder. Don't you lose bet. sight of it. So second down and short now in Crooksville territory. Out here gets a rush, able to get out of the grasp. And the ball up in the air, and it'll go out of bounds before anybody can grab it. it looked like one of the assistant coaches on the far sideline for Kirksville came down with that ball. But out here, I'll tell you what, he's not afraid on the run, and he's got a live arm as well. Yes, he does. He was trying to squeeze it in there. He's lucky that wasn't picked off. He's made some excellent passes tonight. There's no doubt about that. Brady Brandon for Kirksville was the guy that knocked it up in the air. So third down now, and... Uh, long three coming up. See if they try to uh, run this or try to throw a quick out. Last time, you know, they run that quick out underneath very successfully. Now, Tier going to look for there that, but he's inside the stick. Came back to get it. He started on the other side of the first down marker, but 
came back in and it'll be fourth down, but probably four down territory here as Carson Mayo grabbed. You know, as a defensive back and, and coaching the secondary guys, that quick out is almost impossible to stop. If it's thrown on time in, a, in the right spot, there's nothing you can do except make the tackle. Okay, fourth down, see if the Kersal defense can uh, face the challenge here. They ah, need a couple out. of yards, and I think they thought they might have been a little closer because it looked like Altier was going to get under center and sneak it. Instead, they'll call the timeout, and we'll take it. With uh, just under halfway through this, or we, we are about halfway through this second quarter, 14 and nothing, Morgan on top. Welcome to the Century National Bank High School. Big fourth down here, coach, as Morgan needs a couple of yards. See, they try to draw them off sides. Yep, looks yeah, like that's trying. what they're trying, but they're going to go ahead and snap it, and they're not really they're close. They're not going to get it. Second time that Morgan has turned it over on downs. This one a little closer to midfield, and Crooksville. Looking for their first score has decent field position to start this drive. That looked like a running play that needs a perfect timing to it for it to have a chance to succeed. And I think that snap was just a little bit high and it just kind of, you know, ruined the timing of the play and Kersal defense reacted to the play, made a nice stop. And they really need a score here before this halftime comes to an end. Yeah, quick throw left flat, a block out front, positive yardage, in fact, May have got, he did get into Morgan territory just over the midfield stripe. When I talked with Coach Valley Thursday down at the field and we all got together down there at practice, he was telling me that he thought that play was going to be open most of the night. He did not see the Raiders defended against West Ham. There it is again, a little bubble screen. And a first down is... You know, that's one where you have a blocker out front, but two defenders, and you just got to try to make that that's second right. defender miss. That's right. Nice catch by Tyler Rambo. Nice run. And, you know, I was I, I was waiting for those, those plays to be called. But, you know, when you go three plays and out, you don't really have a chance to go through your, you know, your lift of plays. And so now Coach Valley has uh, reached that point, and they're taking advantage of that. Right up the middle. On the carry was, you can probably see that better than I can. David Chapman, he's back in there. He started at the in that backfield spot, back in there on this drive. Landon Gets a couple Pettit, of yards. Landon Pettit stepped up, made a tackle, and it was li inside linebacker spot. Play action, the quick flare. A little bit of weaving, gets a few yards on the play, make it third down in about five. Colt White. <laughs> That's a nice play. I mean, it was only a, a, a few yards for a game, but that ball was thrown out ahead of him a little bit, and he had to lean into the field of play to make that catch, and he knows when he leans into the field of play. There's going to be somebody a, there. There's somebody <laughs> there. He didn't take his eyes off the ball, made a nice catch. A fake. They're going to try to run it, and did he hold oh, it? Oh, yes. catch. Wow. Crooksville gets on the board. Brady Brandon with one hand able to bring it in. Well, I didn't think he had a chance out of his hand. We faked that bubble screen. Rambo goes deep, right, just a post right at the field, and wow. Holy Odell, that was a touchdown. Yes, it was indeed. 33-yard pass from Miller to Brandon. You know, a, a two-touchdown lead against a team that throws the ball like Crooksville is not much. And, you know, we've I've talked about that with a lot of my – coaching buddies that uh, a two touchdown lead is not much in today's game. That was going to be a trick. <laughs> that was yeah, it be was. A, the old uh, trick play there on the snap. Well, that's because the center can is an eligible receiver. Yes, he is. Because he's on the end of the line. They stopped the play. They're going to wave it off and Crooksville probably not going to be too happy that they did because they had it working. They were going to they were going to run a little I guess you'd call that a slant from where he was. <laughs> now they're going to look to kick it. It's called the muddle huddle. It is the muddle huddle. And, again, they were going to throw it to the center. In fact, you don't even have to snap between your legs. You can just right. toss it back side saddle. And good kick up and through. And he's one of the good ones in this league, Zach McLean. And just like that, Crooksville puts a good drive together, culminated in a 33-yard 
Scoring play on the pass from Miller to Brandon. 14 to seven. Crooksville gets one back. Morgan will have it back on offense right after this. Crooksville puts a drive together and cuts the lead in half after the extra point. And coach, I think that's what the doctor ordered for the Serrano. Oh, you bet. But I was going to ask, you think the referees are doing the uh, commercial timeout deal between? Because <laughs> they saw our TV cameras, yeah, I, you think? I, I don't see a guy on the sideline you know, <laughs> who's in charge of that, but it's a long time. I, my theory is they just haven't seen each other for a while, so there's <laughs> a lot of talking going on. Yes, Kirksville definitely needed to come up with a score there. That was a nice drive, well executed. Now their defense has to go out and, and keep doing what they've uh, done since early in the game. You know. Brandon, what a catch. 33-yard play, kickoff taken at about the four. That's Waters. And he'll get it out over the 20, and then a bunch of guys in white jerseys going to meet him. Good gang tackling by the kickoff team. You like to see that. So let's see what Morgan comes back here, how they respond. Well, the, the Morgan coach is on the field. He was on the field talking to the referee immediately. Might have thought there was a little extra there after the whistle was blown. That is not the call. In fact, no call at all, and Morgan will head out. It's been out here all the way tonight. The guy next to him, Waters, number four, was the quarterback as the season started. Altier got in there last week and gets the start tonight. And on the counter, Waters, and able to get a little extra there after almost being tripped up for a loss. Braden Cavani had him at the line of scrimmage and just could not contain him. Ran through his arms, picked up a few yards, and he's coming off the field holding his wrist. That's a... Uh, Number four, is that Waters? Yeah, Waters is four, yep. Might have landed yeah. on it funny. Yeah, holding that arm down with his, maybe his shoulder. That's, yeah, unfortunately, that's usually what it is. Second down, just a couple of yards on that one. Second down and eight. We head to the five-minute mark of this second quarter. Kirk's whole defense having a little trouble lining up here. There they go. Now, Tier looking to throw a little jump. Screen, but oh, great nice reaction. defensive play. That's the fellow that just scored the touchdown. Brandon does it on the defensive side here. He Coach. read that play immediately. He saw that thing coming, and he bolted from the secondary. I mean, he comes from a long way to make this play. Yes, he does. We used to call that the Coke machine in the lobby. That's where <laughs> he came from. You bet. And makes a big play for no gain. And I tell you, blockers out in front of that one. That could have gone away. Another third and long situation for the Raiders. The Kirksville defense has really picked their game up. And you look at that defense, nobody's deeper than five yards on that whole, whole front. Now, look Tier gets out, pressure, look out. And he's going to be sacked. sacked all the way back at the 13-yard line. Tyler Carr. And again, just a dead sprint from his cornerback spot. And out here, he never saw him. Well, they're bringing that blitz from his backside, and the quarterback cannot see that. Usually the guy you leave unblocked on the offensive line is. Oh, that's the that, previous, that previous play. play. But the guy you leave unblocked is the play side outside because your quarterback can see him. You have to block the backside outside linebacker because the quarterback doesn't have eyes in the back of his head. So, Crooksville again moving Morgan backwards. Good punt. Defensive side. They're not going to field it. And they're going to lose. Crooksville. Wow. That's what you were talking about before by fielding it. You can save yourself some yardage. But Boy, I, that just that grinds me back to nightmarish days <laughs> as on the sideline. <laughs> well, Catch the punt. Well, that's when you have two guys back and they both look yeah, at each other and say yours. I mean, that was a nice high punt. I mean, you know, signal a fair catch and get into that thing and catch it. Instead, it'll roll back to the 34 yard line, and that's where Crooksville. We'll get this drive started, but they scored on their last drive. 33-yard pass from Miller to Brandon. One of the great catches we've seen this year. 
three and a half minutes to go. And this offense doesn't need a lot of time to score when the passing game is working. And we're going to get a penalty call. And I think they're going to call that on the center. Yeah, they, the center moved the football, so it's illegal procedure. He was eager. So it'll be first down and 15 back inside the 30. Let's see if this throws the ceramics. They've had some untimely penalties this evening. Quick throw into the flat. It's going to be the old double throw. They've got a Goodbye. receiver open. Goodbye. Yeah, and they're not going to catch him. No, they're not. This game is going to be a one-pointer right now. That's Brandon on the throw. I'll tell you, once he got going, he's got to be a trackster because that was some <laughs> oh, form right there. But you can see the quick throw, and I'll tell you it was close, but he was definitely behind. On the throw was Cavani. Boy, a nice, nice throw. Hit him on the run. He didn't even have to wait very long for that ball to get there. He's 71 yards with 3.23 to go in the half. A point away from tying it up. About seven yards beyond the closest defensive back, and that gap never shortened. Oh, here's a trick play. They're going to run it. And still oh, looking that Miller's going to run out of room, throws in the flat. Receiver keeps his feet, but he's going to be brought down. And Crooksville trying to grab the lead. Instead, will be one behind as they get, though, a big, big play. 71 yards on the pass from Cavani to Brandon. We'll take a timeout. Crooksville gets back to within a point. Still just under three and a half minutes to play in this first half. Crooksville gets the touchdown, tries to get the two-pointer. Morgan defense knocked that away, and it's 14-13. You know, that, that play may, may have worked if they hadn't given them the sneak preview on the first touchdown. <laughs> exactly right. And this kick the end zone. all the way to the end zone and nothing doing, so Morgan will start this drive at their 20. These two teams coach the last two teams in the MVL with a grass field. That's right? exactly right. And I, I want uh, whoever is in charge of this field. This is the best this field has looked. It looks beautiful. Uh, for many, many years. It looks, it, you can definitely tell they've been working on this field to maintain it. It's a grass field. That takes all the attention in the world. It's not like an artificial surface where you go across with a mop once every five years and it's ready to roll. <laughs> uh, this thing has to be maintained all, every day. Uh, well, you know, we were at Crooksville. In fact, we'll be at Crooksville next week, right, Coach, as right. Shockton comes to town. That field looked beautiful as well. And they say they don't practice on that every day. And oh, no. Morgan does yeah. not practice on this every day. But, you know, it takes a lot of attention to make it work, and especially because we just haven't had much rain. No, you know, it's been the uh, the monsoon of June, and, and uh, now, you know, it hardly rains a drop. There you see head coach. Chase Bowman talking to his squad. Chase Bowman, of course, played here at Morgan and then went to Otterbein where he was a defensive back. In fact, here's here's our trivia that I, my son Casey was playing at John Carroll, just had started with the team as a freshman, got to travel to Otterbein, and Chase Bowman spoiled the party for the Blue Streaks fan with an interception late to seal the win for Otterbein. So... I didn't really like him much that day, to be honest. Well, but, uh, that, uh, you know, <laughs> that's a good enough reason for me. But he is a great young head coach, let me tell you. We enjoyed our discussion with him yesterday. Good running play out to the 25. Nice trap block that time. Looked like the right guard coming across. You see here right he comes. Here, coming down seals the line. That, seals the defensive end from the play. And That's 58. That's a name we've called most of the night. Landon Pettit. Nice yeah, block. Landon Pettit. Sealed that guy off. Created a running lane for a nice gain of six. Yeah, actually, they move it ahead to the 26. So, second down and four. Clock running. Two timeouts, or actually one timeout left for Morgan, two for Crooksville. And Morgan be short of the first down out about the 28. I think same blocking scheme. Pettit comes across. The difference is number 13, number 15 gets trapped, but number 13 squeezes that thing down and makes the tackle. Then it gets underneath everybody. Yeah, we used to tell our defensive ends, if you're staying there waiting for the, the trap to get to you, then he's won. You have to squeeze to the inside. 
And that's a hard skill to uh, to get across. But the good well, ones could do it, and, and uh, guys who weren't very good, they, they never learned that. But uh, you have to squeeze down that trap. You can't let the trap take you to the outside. Third down and just a yard. First down and a few yards more. Kirksville's defense was stacked that time. I think they really expected a quarterback sneak or an up the, up the middle play, and they just kind of went to the outside, that outside dive. First down easily. Brady White on the carry. Goes out of bounds, so the clock stops with a minute 54 before halftime. I'm sure Coach Bowman would like to pick up some points here. Let's Go into halftime with more than a one-point lead. Again, they've only got one timeout left. Kirksville's defense is up tight. I mean, there, nobody's playing deep. And the throw is incomplete, trying to get it out to Nicewanger. This is a great time for a, a, a hitch and go or a, a pump fake by Altier because the defensive backs are playing really tight. They're up close. Uh, they make one mistake, and their guy is going to be behind them. Crooksville trying to get pressure off the edge. In fact, that time, good read by the offensive lineman and Morgan to adjust and get those guys coming off the edge. Crooksville's pass rush has really picked up here in the second quarter. They've done a nice job. So second down and 10. Now the DBs kind of sneak back a little. Trying to run, see if he can get out of nope. bounds. Clock stops, a minute 43. And Waters back in there, so his wrist must be okay. Shoulder or whatever was irritating him earlier in the game, so good to see him back out there. Third down to 10. 143 left here. And they'll look over at their coaching staff, the Raiders will. To <laughs> Boy, I love these signals from the sideline. Uh, you can almost write it on a piece of paper and throw it out there. And, <laughs> you're close enough, you can probably know, whisper you, it. Just run the play, to. guys. And they're coming close to penalty. Just get it away in time. There's the deep ball. Out here, going to go deep. Lots of players back there. And he's got the arm strength, but Crooksville kind of looking for that one. So clock stops a minute 36. And Crooksville still some time here. With, they have two timeouts. Excellent coverage. That time, Waters came across and picked off. Uh, number 15, guy who's been making life miserable for Altier, uh, Tyler Carr was coming on the, for an outside rush from the backside, but Waters picked him off. Nice job that time by Waters. So Morgan looking to put it away. And almost did not get that over the rush, the hands of the rush coming. And we're going to get a penalty flag thrown. See what that's all about. On the return, it was Colt White. And did he call for a fair catch and then run? I, I'm thinking that it's what they're talking about. Uh, we can't quite see it, but they threw it right away. I think that's what happened. He must have raised the hand in some way. Mm -hmm. As if they call this or wave it off. No, no, gonna, block in the back. They're going to say a block in the back. I didn't really see a block there, though, so I don't know. <laughs> There wasn't anybody there. Well, must not have happened at the point of attack, but that's how it went. That's yeah, it was that just kind of strange. That yeah, was the impression I had from when the referee called that penalty, that he was looking right at it. But yeah, but so we are a little farther away from the accident. He is. Yes, we sure are. One twenty-four, a long field. And there's the play they were telling you they're going to run all night, and he's got room. A cut, and he'll step out of bounds. No, we're going to get a – then another 15 yards, I think, going to be tacked on here, Coach. I believe so. I don't know if he grabbed a face mask or just hit him out of bounds. But the quick pass out to Rambo and some excellent running, some good blocking out front. And, All right, here yeah, comes it's going to be a late hit. Personal foul. Yep, late hit. And so another 15 yards from the 48, and Crooksville in business. You know, with, their, with their style of offensive play, uh, a minute 17 is forever for them. They have two timeouts left. 
First and 10 at about the uh, 33, it looks like, Kevin. Yep. Okay, here we go. In the pistol, Miller had three receivers to the oh, left, but gonna he's going to fake to them and look, and it's going to be knocked yeah, away. Gonna We're going to get a penalty throw. Okay. Again, if you don't get your head turned back around, you're just going to get the call. This is the one that drives head coaches crazy. The referee closest to the play makes no call. The referee in the middle of the field, farther, much further away, throws the flag. And the, the fans here at Morgan not in agreement, I think it is safe to say. The referee's going to talk about it because, again, they have talked about a lot of this stuff. You see him meeting. And let's well, see. I know that coach can't nah, be on the field. They're going to wave it off. Coach, you can't be on the field talking to your players. They wave the penalty off, so it'll be second down and 10. And the Morgan fans uh, were equally appreciative. Yes, they were. Of the resulting call. The pass was just a little short. They tried to do the, uh, you know, they, they faked the bubble screen to the uh, far side and came back this one receiver side. The defensive back just didn't go for it quite as bad as they had hoped. Oh, here we go. Empty backfield. Miller calls his own number. Good face. Oh, good stiff arm. And he'll have a first down. I don't think so. Uh, they stopped the clock, I believe, to move him. Yes, they did. All right. I won it. that one. All right. You know, Kevin, I had to give you one every now and I then. I know. Uh, Matthew I might not have got Tokai, but Matthew I got told that if I didn't, If I didn't go <laughs> along with that, you know. You, Got to make me look good yeah, every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Well, you know, you are anything, you are a gentleman any, and a scholar. Anything for your mother. <laughs> I know she's watching now. You want her back again. This time, the quick throw to the left. Good block out there. Look out. And Rambo going to take it down to the ten yard line or thereabouts, actually to the nine. So, will be goal to go. 36.5 seconds right on the stripe, and we're going to get a timeout yep. called by Crooksville. We will take it as you see Rambo taking it down just inside the 10. Big play coming up here for Crooksville as they try to take the lead for the first time tonight. Crooksville with a first and goal to go at the 10, and now we're going to get stoppage of play again. I don't care. I have a jar of hot. Pepper jelly. You know, you look at this. You are getting everything. You don't have room in your yeah. car to take all that home. <laughs> oh man! Is they, they uh, April here at uh, Morgan yeah. treating coach with just mason jar after mason jar. You know, I've avoided chemical dependency my entire life, but I, I may uh, with this with these little treats I just got handed. Boy, I tell you what, I'm telling I'll you, you're in good shape. I'll tell you how good it is uh, next week. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Coach. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> call me. Let me know. <laughs> yeah. Let me know how it's going. Yeah. You you know, I'll have my people call your people. And, again, we've got discussion going on. Not sure what all that's about. We've had quite a bit of these tonight. Now we're just chatting it up. Well, I've always thought that these kind of things uh, work for the – defense. Now they're taking the players off the field. Well, Coach, we're going to uh, go over the inventory of the food you'll be taking home. We'll take a quick break. 14-13, Morgan on top, but Crooksville driving. We get started now after they've fixed everything. Actually, they wanted to change the clock a little bit. First down goal, Miller going to roll and look. He's going to tuck it and go. Puts his He's head in. down, and he knocks down a defender and takes it into the end zone. 28.9 seconds, and Crooksville into the lead for the first time tonight, Coach. The way we talked during the timeout, if they ran the ball, they're going to burn their timeout, but I think that's a run all the way. I think wow. in his mind it was a run all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, when the quarterback puts his shoulder down and runs over you to get in the end zone, buddy, I tell you what, you know he means business. Nice nice job that time. Good blocking on the perimeter. And Miller just bowled his way into the end zone. So, Crooksville takes the lead 19-14. You know, they've had a lead several times this season in the first five games. He just not been able to hang on to it. The kick is up and good. And 
Crooksville in the lead, 20 to 14. Morgan will get it one more time inside 30 seconds to go in this first half. We'll be back right after this. Yes. Crooksville to kick it away after taking the lead. A little more than a nine yard run for Caden Miller, the quarterback, took it around the right side. The kick was good for the extra point. And that's where we are, Coach, 2014. It looked like Morgan might run away and hide early in this game. I'll tell you what, I thought, I thought it was going to be one of those uh, we're in the clock in the second half deals there for a while. And picking it up and running, guy that doesn't usually get to carry the ball, lobbying to become the fullback. <laughs> That was Wade Pauley. And he had a head of steam coach when yes, he picked he that did. ball up. He was happy to carry that. And I believe he, he ascribes to that uh, point A to point yeah. B theory yeah, of yeah, running I the ball. Yeah, I think so. He must be a geometry major. He figures shortest distance, get me some more yards. I'll run over a couple guys along yeah. the way. He's one of those equal opportunity runners. He's going to give everybody a chance to hit him and doesn't care. Uh, now, Kirksville has to hang on for 21 seconds uh, to take a lead in at, at halftime. They'll probably play this a little soft in the secondary. Oh, they are. Secondary's back deep. It's the first time I've seen a deep safety uh, for the entire game for Kirksville. Here now comes Tier the pass. throw long. It's going to be it's picked, picked off. Get out and of bounds. And getting no. him from behind. Big time play right there by Tyler Rambo. Now, Tier made the mistake of throwing back. Yep. That's tough. That's tough to make that throw across the field like that. I mean, you got to really heave it. Waters keeps Rambo from going the distance. 10.4 seconds. Miller's got a big enough arm to throw a Hail Mary. Maybe he'll try to cut off a little bit here. If they can get the ball down the field, they got a good field goal kicker. Yes, they do. The other thing they have is they have speed at that out, those outside receiver positions. Right. So you don't have to throw it the entire length of the field for one of those guys to uh, put you in the taillight mode. And they're, they can be gone in a heartbeat. Crooksville does have one timeout left. And McLean, their kicker, we saw him make it from about 45 during practice. Over the middle it goes and intended for White, but he had not turned his head back around. When well, that ball hit Lucas Waters, in the arm, I mean, it, it was on top of him. He was watching the receiver cut across the middle, and that ball just nearly took his own helmet off. Had he caught that, I mean, that would have been a foot race to the goal line because there's nobody in front of him except maybe uh, Caden Miller. Maybe one more play in this one. See if they go for Hail Mary. Nope, Crooksville will keep it here this time as Crooksville uses their final timeout to diagram. You think maybe a Hail Mary, a little hook and <laughs> lateral or something? Well, you know, it's hard to tell. Uh, Greg Williams is on that coaching staff, and Greg was on my, my staff. He's my offensive coordinator. And uh, Casey's an offensive-minded guy. We could see it. <laughs> we could see the uh, lateral deal, you know, 15 lateral. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to say. But I, uh, if the guys were still working for me, uh, their head coach would be saying, we're going to take a knee and go to, <laughs> go to the locker room. The room. <laughs> Casey Valley out there talking to his troops. Both these coaches, alums of their respective high schools. Well, Jamie Brandon's on the sideline. He played at Crooksville. I was there as an assistant. Darren Rambo played while I was an assistant. So, you know, I know all those guys, and uh, I still consider them kids. Oh, uh, of course. You know, but right now their kids are in the lineup. So, uh, the they're fine young men now. Well, they're going to change up the quarterback. It's going to be Dickerson, and that's because they want to get Miller to run a route, which he does down the right side, and it'll be incomplete as time runs out. So, you know, pretty clearly Caden Miller, one of the great athletes in the league, they spread him out wide, let him run, try to run under it, but pass goes astray. Crooksville finding themselves down behind 14 to nothing in the first quarter. Rally, they'll take a 20 to 14 lead to the locker room at halftime. We'll have second half action for you right after this timeout.
Welcome back to the WHIZ TV Game of the Week brought to you by Century National Bank. I'm Kevin Aral along with the coach, Doug Clifford. We get ready to start the second half. Coach Morgan was ahead 14-0 driving again. Looked like they might just run away and hide. And Crooksville after that able to get themselves righted and get the lead. Well, you know, we, we talked about that at halftime. Morgan jumped out to that big lead, but they had two short fields to do it with, a 10-yard drive and I think a 40-yard drive. And, and since then, their offense hasn't moved the ball. Kick is away. It will get into the – nope, they're going to let him go. The ball apparently didn't get into the end zone. Player had a foot in it, but it's got to be the football that gets in there. So out over the 20 to the 23. Kobe Hodge brought that back. Yeah, he caught the ball at about the one, took a step back, and that, that, that step back put him in the end zone. But It looked like the football stayed yeah. on the other side of the line. So that's where Morgan will get started. You're right, they had some early success and some short fields. You like, if you're their head coach, Chase Bowman, you'd like to see a sustained drive here now. I'm sure that's one of the, the messages that Cush Valley's used at halftime. You know, everything went... Morgan's way to start the game, and now we get we're in control. Just keep it up. Just keep it up. Whoa, Waters almost lost the handle, and he'll lose a couple of yards back to the 21. Right now, the defensive line for the ceramics is dominating the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're I mean, just Morgan's offensive line is making no headway, uh, aside from a couple of good trap blocks. Right now, the defensive line for Kirksville is dominating. And Coach Valley talked to us Thursday about two of the big boys coming back on the defensive line uh, that must be Tanner Hayes and I uh, can't, can't get this other guy's number we'll get 77 Maralt so th they were out or two of those guys were out well, here comes the blitz over the middle did he get there a little too early yes he did and they're gonna say no no flags out look like he might have defense might have jumped that route just a little bit let's see uh, I think he might have got Got away with well, one That there. goes in a category, <laughs> it's only a penalty if you get caught. Yeah, because I think he got there a little it's early. A little quick. So it'll be third down clock stops. Played just about a minute of this third quarter. I'm sure though the, the Kirkshaw staff is pleased to see their team playing with a little bit of aggression as opposed to those first two possessions when they just kind of took the hit. Screen pass. A little throwback. Look out. And... He's got some room. A first down and a room, lot yeah. more. A blocker out in front as well. Good defense to cut down the angle, but not before a big, big pass play. Where that was well designed and well executed. Yes, it was. They took advantage of that big rush from the backside. And had it not been for the great angle taken by Chris Pitcock, that may have been a touchdown because he still had blockers in front of him. Caden Williams on the reception. And... Again, good defensive play. Oh, he definitely would. That would have been a touchdown had it not been for Pitcock because he had two blockers and one defender left for the ceramics. He did not give in all the way down to the 35. Altier taking his time. Blitz coming off the edge. He's able to oh. get past that. He's got a receiver open deep. Caught and a touchdown for Morgan. Catching in the end zone, Kobe Hodge, 35-yard pass play. Well, that, <laughs> if you're a Kirksville fan, you're thinking this should be a sack. And just out here, Aiden to, Miller just whiffed. Came on the outside blitz and just whiffed. Quarterback broke contain. If you're going to send your defensive backs on a blitz, you've got to get there because you know you're under undermanned in the secondary. And that time, Altier took advantage. And the extra point is good. And that is the margin of the lead now for the home Morgan Raiders as they're on top. 21-20. We'll take a timeout. It took them just over a minute to do it. But Morgan jumps back into the lead. Jordan Reigns right there getting ready to kick it off. His extra point moments ago is the margin of the Morgan lead, 21-20. And coach, we had not seen a quick drive like that from <laughs> yeah. Morgan in this uh, ball game. A quick strike, that cannon went off again. And uh, When I was here, my first year's head coach, they scored so many points. 
A cannon went off. It caused so much smoke they had an air pollution alert. <laughs> well, it did go off again on the after the 35-yard scoring pass from Altier to Hodge. Good return for Crooksville. Brandon stretched that thing all the way to the sideline, trying to find a seam. Morgan uh, did a nice job, stayed in their lanes, and just kind of forced him to go uh, east and west instead of north and south. Guys jumping around. <laughs> Gets nice it job. out to about 33. Nice coverage that time by the, the Raiders. Maintain leverage, maintain outside contain. Cut off the return man. So Crooksville had the lead at the half, but Morgan grabs it right back on their first drop. Let's what? see how Crooksville responds. I, I'm, I'm having a, a feeling that whoever has the ball last may be the winning team. Actually, I think that was a backward pass. That was definitely a lateral. And we're going to get Whoa. another penalty flag thrown. I think uh, the tackler took the ball, the receiver down to the ground, well out of bounds. Morgan guys kind of talking amongst themselves. <laughs> the Morgan fans. <laughs> they got a call reversed in the first half, so you got to give them credit. And it is going to be personal foul called against the Morgan Raiders. But you can see the quick pass. Actually, Running play was a lateral to the left side. David Chapman on the play and then knocked down well out of bounds. You know, that's, I don't know. I mean, he, they looked like they made contact on the field of play and it just kind of continued to the outside. I'm surprised they called that. But Well, it was yeah. the Crooksville bench. You probably got some yeah, help over there. I'm sure. And coming out to the right side this time, five-yard gain. Well, as uh, Colt White takes it, you know I, I know I know Casey Valley and I know Greg Williams and, and uh, coach with both those guys when they were on my staff. And if you're not going to take something away from them, they're going to keep uh, keep feeding it to you. And right now they're just throwing that bubble screen almost every play. Second down to five comes again. And they throw it again. This time it's Rambo, and he'll be stopped short of the first down. And need a couple more yards. Much better job that time by the Raiders. I saw Waters is in on that, a couple other players. Good reaction. Yeah, good pursuit out there. I think that's Kobe Hodge, number 26. Yes, he's a return guy when uh, Kirkshaw kicked off. Much better job. Going to force Kirkshaw to go to another trick in that bag of tricks that uh, people call offense these days. <laughs> You sound, you sound like get off my lawn guy there. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, I am the get off your lawn guy with this stuff. There he is. Pass, and it's knocked down. Waters almost picked it off. Well, Intended it's, for Brady Brandon. I mean, if you're a defensive guy for, for Morgan, you're the defensive coach calling the signals, you're telling your guys, guys, they're running two plays. They're yep. running the, the bubble screen, and they're running a fake bubble screen and throw it down, down the seam. So pay attention on the back side because it's, it's coming. Four down territory for the Ceramics. Couple yards to go on this fourth down. And they will run four receivers out to the right side, one to the far side of the field. Empty backfield for Miller. Now he'll bring all the receivers to this right side. And he's going to look to run it for the first down. And he's got it. In fact, add another five yards past that. Be first and 10 for Crooksville. Flag down. Illegal procedure, we'll do it all over again. Now they didn't stop it, so it makes me think that somebody lined up incorrectly. They may have had too many guys in the backfield. So it'll be fourth down and eight. Nah, make that seven to go for a first down. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't think that was an illegal formation. And they had two guys on the line of scrimmage. One covered up the other one, but it wasn't a pass. Right. And yeah, Casey Valley, well, he wants an explanation because he said had that set up. So he had two men off the line of scrimmage and two men on the line of scrimmage on, on this near side. That's where they ran the ball to. Well, they're discussing there. You see Coach Valley talking about it. And he will make his point. Again, as we watch it, let's see how much longer we're going to go with it. And 
the other referee saying that somebody took a step back. But again, you're right, Coach, on all these things with running plays, I don't know that it matters. Well, you have to have seven on the line. Uh, and and I, I think, think that was the call. I, yeah, and yeah. I think when that, that the young man did take a step back, but it wasn't very far. I mean, I, I was thinking, if, well, if this is going to be a pass play, this is going to be an illegal man down the field. So instead of fourth and two and converting it, it's going to be fourth and seven now. Still in four down territory at the Morgan 42 yard line. Well, I, boy, I was, if I was doing a family counseling for Coach Valley, I would say punt this thing down deep, but he's going to go for it. He's going to roll the dice. Good blocking. Miller rolls. Not even uh, close. And good coverage. Everybody came with the receivers. So everybody came to the near side of the field. And Miller. And you, well, you almost know, want to tell him, look, with fourth down, throw it yep. into the coverage because if they intercept it, well, you know, you're in, better off. In coaching circles, the rule of thumb is if this is going to be your last chance, you've got to go for it. Well, this is far from the last chance. Uh, so right now, Morgan's offense was clicking that first possession, so we'll see if they can come back now and, and keep this momentum going. So getting it on uh, on downs is I Morgan. I don't think a, a, the clock-eating, ground-pounding drive is in vogue tonight by either team. Low snap Whoa. and a big-time rush forces Altier to get rid of it. And we're going to get a – now we've got – Illegal man down the field. It is. Had that been a screen, wouldn't have been an issue, but it got out there a little further. Well, I saw Colton Young from Morgan, number six, put his hand down to try to uh, come back and make a play on that ball, and, and uh, he must have sprained that wrist. It's giving him a little bit of pain down there. Both coaching staffs really working hard on the referees right now, <laughs> saying, "No, we that's not that's not the play we ran. Come on, it's kind of like Congress. We got our lobbyists and out there, and, and, uh, they're doing a good job. Good. Well, we'll see if it pays. You know, people would say, "Well, you can't get the call changed." And as coach, well, you just argue, "We'll get the next one, though." <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> We're going to remind them that we'd like the next one. So first down again, but now 15 yards to go. Well, Coach Bowman used that screen pass last time to slow down that pass for us. This time they're going to try to run the ball a little bit. Oh, missed tackle, and he's going to be hard to bring down now. And we're Another gonna flag. Get flag thrown. Wow. And must be right because there's a couple of flags laying right in the same area. I think we're going to have a – my guess is going to be a holding call or a block in the back. Yeah, and it is, a, it is a block in the back. And the flag at the 44-yard line or thereabouts. So it'll go back to the actually about a nine-and-a-half-yard penalty. Back to the 35. And, again, good play design. But there was the – you saw it right there as Nicewanger got in on him a little bit. That was close, though. we got to be honest. But if you, if you can read the guy's number from behind, let him go. So first down and 17. We've run this first down play a couple of times. Now. Kershaw's showing blitz. Here it comes. And again, bouncing off a tackle. Still going to be a loss on the play, but not as much as it could have been. Brady White working hard to get what he could. Dane Childers, big number 70, made the hit and hung on. Made a tackle. So second down, still long for Morgan. They've got a one-point lead. They scored on the first drive of this second half. A 35-yard pass from Altier to Hodge. Second down at 19 with eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. Inside eight minutes to go in this third quarter. Altier going to roll again. Look. On the sideline, he'll just throw that one away. Yes, he did. And good coverage. That's Usually because it was pretty good coverage. Heady play by the young quarterback. Throwing that thing out of bounds. Gave him a chance that time. Yep. Good block and picking up some extra guys trying to shoot through there. Kirksville's left inside linebacker. 
is lining up in blitz mode. It's number 44. It's David Chapman. I mean, he's walking up to the line of scrimmage prior to the snap, and it's not been a bluff uh, type situation. He's been, uh, he's come both times. And we get a timeout called in time. Uh, we did Crooksville calls the timeout. We will take it. 21-20, Morgan with the football, the one-point lead. They'll have a third and long coming up. Crooksville, the th or Morgan, the third and long against the tough Crooksville defense. Out here running, has a receiver out there, but he'll skip it in, and we're going to get a late flag on that one. Well, they substituted. They put number two in the game, Ethan Sprankle, to and replace. We're going to get roughing uh, the quarterback called against uh, Crooksville. And well, that just backfired. Sprankle lost contain, and I wasn't sure who the penalty was on, but uh, boy, that's a mistake. Automatic first down. Yeah, we didn't see it right at the end, but it is roughing the quarterback. And is that an automatic? Well, I don't think it is. And let's see. Ball will go out to the 48, but I believe it's still going to be third down. Well, they marked first down, but now they've changed their mind. I'm sure they talked about it a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure they did. <laughs> well, let's talk. Third down and four. All new means you talk amongst yourselves. And it looks like Kirksville bringing the house, and they're going to hand off on the counter. And Kirksville blitzed in the right place. Pile still moving. Boy, I tell you, that got a lot closer than it was. Yes, it did. He's going to be a yard short with a fourth down coming up. Let's see what Morgan wants to do. The waters just would not go down. We're going to talk about Let's it talk some more. Talk about it. Oh. Third down in a yard, or be fourth down in a yard. Well, we got referees coming in from out of town here to talk about as, as the side judge comes all the way in. You think these guys call each other on the way home in the car? <laughs> I mean, well, they get to talk about something. I mean, I'm sure they need to. Okay, I'm not trying you. to insinuate. Well, then it should have been first down and well, 10. Been, yeah. Well, see, when it was first down, it should have been first down and 10, not third down. And, well, this is, yeah, this is just not. Well, we're going to talk about this again. You know what? We're going to take a quick time out just so we can watch all the proceedings because this might take a while. 21-20, Morgan leads it at home, and it'll be, it'll be second down in some distance. We'll figure that out here as we take a timeout. We're back, and I can tell you, Coach, this is where if we were an NFL broadcast, we'd be talking to our official friend. Let me tell you what. <laughs> we'll be going to the uh, – the booth in New York for a exactly. ruling. Exactly. It should have been first down and 10 after the roughing the passer. So now that it's second down, well, it's second. Wait a minute. We're not quite ready. Referee wants to insist that it's second down. Well, it's second down on the chains. Now they're, there we go. All they're, right. They're now we're synchronized ready. now. Okay. Scoreboard. And this is what it should be. It is second down and eight, which is a little better for Crooksville after the chains there. But it is in Crooksville territory. Waters looking for some room, able to skip one tackler. And then he'll go out of bounds. But I tell you, you do not have this fella down until he's down. That is just. No, he's, uh, his feet are moving. Even on that previous play where, I mean, he, I thought he was going to be tackled for I mean, a couple of yards. And I think he gained five yards on the thing. We couldn't even see him in the pile. Yeah, he just keeps on moving and give him credit. Right, right guard, left guard pulled, trap, kick out, one seals. We got a couple more yards after that, so it's going to be third down and a short five. I'd say make sure you contain this quarterback to the right side. Here he comes. Yeah, that's where he wants to go. Throw down the flats, got a receiver, but in and out of his hands. Would have been short of the first down, but he have been fourth down and maybe two. Instead, it'll be fourth down and five. Well, that is, a, that is about as close to a uh, 
perfect tendency as, as either team has shown. But when it gets to be third and long, uh, quarterback for Morgan is going to get get snap and, and go to his right, especially to the to the wide side. Kirksville needs to be aware of that. Chase Bowman elects to have his squad kick it away. He must have heard Coach up here talking earlier. And the kick will land and stop right around the 12-yard line as Morgan plays the field position game. Smart move. Smart move, Coach Bowman. Still about seven minutes to go in this third quarter. Only score in this half so far. A Morgan touchdown, an extra point to retake the lead. They let it 14 to nothing, and then Crooksville came back to take the 2014 lead, and Morgan, as we said, on the first drive of this half, gets it into the end zone from 35 yards out, and out here to Hodge pass. See what Crooksville can do here, starting at their 13. Ball's on the ground. I think Crooksville got back on it. Miller able to jump back on it. Looked like Miller kind of took off to his left and just a little early, and the ball yeah. just didn't catch up with him. I think that was a quarterback run. There, oh, it was just a little bit low. Uh, yeah, he just didn't gather it in, he but it looked like he was going to take off that way himself. Exactly. So instead, a loss on the play of six. Whoa. Wow, that was Whoa. dangerous. Yes, it was. That double clutch pass, buddy. <laughs> you give a lot of defenders a second chance on that one. A lot of blue jerseys out that way, as you'll see. Pretty good blocking in there. What did you see his feet, Kevin? I mean, it looked like he was uh, standing in line at lunch instead of, you know, stepping and throwing the football. Yeah, he had his full chest facing the yeah. receiver. He just kind of flicked yep. it out there. I think the uh, defensive back stepped in his line of sight to his receiver and broke up his uh, momentum and timing. Some pressure steps inside it. And now Miller will run it. He'll get out over the 20 to the 22. And it'll be close to a first down. I mean, it is very close. Well, we're having a momentary movement of the chains. But that and it always... is right on the stick. So a big run by Caden oh, Miller. Big play. That would have been... That would have been a huge advantage for Morgan for Kirks to be punting out of the end zone. There's that Look screen out. again. Well, this time they yeah. drew up the defense to just go <laughs> get him. Yes, I think Coach Bowman's seen enough of that. And so had Brady White. Nice play out there that time. Great tackle. Got those arms out there. No place for that receiver to go, but down. Okay. Head coach Chase Bowman was a college defensive back. He kind of likes seeing that. One time to the well too often for the ceramics on the bubble screen. On the play, they lose four. Fake the bubble, looking again, throwing it over the middle. He's got a receiver complete. Whoa, look at that. Let's see who look wins out, the foot look race. Out. And good tackle from behind by Waters. What As a play. Colt White, and that, that throw was exactly where it had to be. Not exactly the way you draw it up, but that does not matter a bit. And that was a little jump pass that time. But give Waters credit because oh, he bet. stayed right with it. You bet. That could have been six points easily. So long play down to the 46-yard line in Morgan territory. Clock will start now. Five and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Crooksville trying to get the lead back, trailing by one. Well, if fans like big plays, this is a game to watch. Looking to his left, going across the field, almost picked off. Stepping in was Colton Young, and had he had, was that, oh. if he were able to catch on that ball, he, yeah. he had nothing but green in front of him. But a good job to knock it down. Tate Miller's got a strong arm, but when you throw from the opposite hash to the sideline, you better hope the yep. defense isn't there. So it well, would just kinda, be a long incompletion, make it second and ten. He kind of had a little bit of a wind-up throw on that, too, and it, that gave uh, Waters an extra step to, to make a move on that ball. And, boy, he just nearly came up with a big play. Look out. And again, the bubble Man, screen, I'm and this done. time right there, whistle blows, play stops. That's Chase Vincent. Chase Vincent, nice play. Smart play. He stopped on the whistle. He didn't take that, uh, you know, Cheap throw down at the last, you know, after the play's over. Nice job that time. Nice job. 
Losing some more yards on that play. Be third down and long. Got to get 17. Got to get it to the 37-yard line in Morgan territory. Well, right now, you know, Kirksville was throwing that bubble screen because Morgan wasn't playing it correctly. Now they're still throwing it, and they're hoping their player could be a better athlete than Morgan's, and that's not working right now. Miller doing his best friend Tarkin him back there, for those of you that remember the Minnesota Viking. And Miller going to get the first down and more, and that's what he can do for you, Coach. No doubt about it. And we're going to get a late penalty flag to boot. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to call there. I mean, I, that playing thing came in really late. Was it a horse collar tackle? I mean, is that a penalty in high school? Yep. That's the call. Yep, that's yep. what's going to be the call. Yep. And it is a horse collar personal foul, so add some more to that on a third and long. Miller got the first down on the run and then put another 15 on it. And Boy, Brooksville close to retaking the lead. Morgan's defense has given up some, some big plays, but they've given some huge penalties as well. Great shot right there from our sideline camera. And Chapman will run it off the left side. Quarterbacking that play was Noah Dickerson. And we call those running plays. <laughs> Is that what those yeah, for, are? For our, our, our viewing audience, if you're a little confused, haven't seen one, that was a running play. That's what we call this. Yep. Used to have them all the time. <laughs> Usually out of the eye formation, yep, yep. you know, two tight ends maybe. I told uh, I asked the coach of New Lex if he ever used the eye formation. He thought that was something the band did. <laughs> Dickerson remains a quarterback. And another handoff to Chapman. He's going to just try to get his way back to the line of scrimmage. Can't see if Miller. Well, they're kind of giving him a little bit of a, a rest over there. I mean, that, not, hey, here he comes. It looked like he was uh, a little bit winded at the end of that run. Well, then, then the, the horse uh, collar then the on horse top collar of that. tackle on top of that. Yeah, I think that kind of took his toll on him a little bit. I think he's finding his way back in there. And he's playing defense, and he's on the kickoff return team. Uh, Other than that, he'd probably drive the I'm, bus home. <laughs> I'm telling you. Third down and four. And Miller back in there. Rolls and looks into the flat of first down and more. Did well, he, he get hit the in? pylon? Yes. Yes, touchdown. Colt White from Miller for the What an effort. What an effort. I mean, he has a tackler draped all over him. And he just keeps going. And now I'm going to, you know, that's a great play, but I think if we had the replay of colleges and pros, I think they're going to say his knee was touched in a little Might short. Might have been about the one-yard line. Yeah. But he got in, yep. so. Miller to White from 16 yards out. Oh, nope. Strike that. They are going to say that. They had replay uh, an okay. official who yep. acted like replay out there. Yep. So first and goal at the three. Miller can walk in walk and in does. It lost contain out that way. Yep. And Miller spotted it, so he will get in the end zone. And he'll do that with three – actually, I don't think they ran the clock on that play. <laughs> so it, it was 316 before, it's 316 now, and Miller runs it in from three yards. Yep. And, again, they just – everybody else, that one receiver out the right side, everybody else went to well, the left. Well, maybe that was the extra point. That oh, you know, there you go. That's why. Now we're caught up. Okay, so let's rethink this whole thing. Because I knew his knee As we would say in the, the courtroom, three. strike that. We better have a talk about that. I know. We call down, tell the referees, we need to talk. Now. We need to talk. So the touchdown was good. Was good from outside the 15 yard line, and that was from Miller to Colt White. Yes. And then the two point is Miller walking it in. And that, after all that, makes it 28. To 21. Yes, it was. We knew we would get it right, right eventually. Well, maybe you didn't think we could, but I knew we could. We'll keep it right here for the kickoff. Well, five foot eight, 127 pound <laughs> Colt White power ran into the end zone with that defender on his back, and he did get the touchdown. Yeah, he did. So great effort. You should have been telltale for me that the clock didn't move, but you know <laughs> we'll go through that another day. High kickoff. Well, actually oh, hit at about man. the 14. Sit right there. 
And alertly jumping on top of it is Kobe Hodge, and he'll actually get some yardage out of it. So now that, boy, I just feel lost all of a sudden, Coach. Well, <laughs> you know, it was a long ride over here. And it's yes, be it was. <laughs> and it's twice as long to get, to get home. Oh, there may be some, there may be some uh, rest stop working in this one on the way home. He may have to take the Muskingum River Ferry to get back to uh, Franklin County. <laughs> I may do it. 25-yard line. Morgan will get started now trailing by seven after Crooksville uh, gets the two-point try, which we initially called a touchdown. I initially called a touchdown. I won't blame it on anybody else. But now Morgan got to work. By, you know, if they do what they did in that first drive of this half, Coach, they can move it right down the field. That's right. Here comes a blitz from the outside. And we're going to get a yeah, penalty Miller's. called, and it's going to be offsides against yep. Crooksville. You know, we thought this game was taking a little long, but as we checked other scores, everybody else was taking long too. So <laughs> maybe the referees had a meeting around this area. Not say I don't think they've got any of these calls wrong. I just nope. I know, think they, yeah, they're just taking a little bit of time. That's all. Thorough. When I would be slow about something, I just tell people I was thorough. So we'll go with that. Yeah, I don't see. I don't. I can't really recollect any bad calls. No. Nah. But it, it was like. Uh, it's like comparing your uh, cell phone to a rotary phone. Yep. Oh, wow. wow. That almost a catch close to the first down and then almost an interception that would have gone the other way. And that bounced into the arms of Caden Miller. And, I mean, you know, if anyone could have made that a touchdown, it would have been him. Yeah, he was trying. He was he was bearing in on the yep. hit, though. Yep. So to make it second down and five. And... Morgan gets the call from their sideline. Well, they've they've really enjoyed that counter with the uh, backside guard pulling here to the uh, to the left. See if they come back with that. Be a good time for it on second down. And there you go, coach. Lead block. See, so outran his lead blocker. Yep. I'll tell you what. If I had a big fella out in front of me, I believe I'd just oh, let baby. him go. See, you bet. see here he kind of he got ahead of him. If he waits for him, of course, he's probably worried he's got somebody coming from behind. Yep. I don't know. I believe I'd just put my hand on his back and well, you know, <laughs> let him go. I, I remember watching pro football and watching that running back grab that guy's jersey and just yeah, yeah. follow him through the, you know, fly him up the field. Yeah. Like getting behind a bus. Might have been able to get the first down there. Instead, it'll be third down in about two. Hey, you just get impatient. Big play for the Raiders right here. Down seven. They'd like to keep the drive going. Kirksville like to get the ball back with the lead. Pass and just a little too tall. Trying to find Colton Young out there. That's a difficult throw. You're running to your right as a quarterback, and your receiver's going the opposite direction across the field. If he's wide open, yeah, but boy, Miller's on him, and that that would have had been a perfect pass for a completion. And you know, usually, you know, when you're coaching up quarterbacks, as they roll, the field gets limited right. in terms of where you want to throw exactly. it. It can be dangerous coming back against it. So Morgan, even though only a couple of yards to go in their own territory, will kick it away. Good snap. Good punt. Fair catch called for and taken at the 39 for Crooksville. So the Ceramics have the ball and the seven-point lead after the very deceptive two-point extra point. <laughs> <laughs> well, it only fooled us. So, <laughs> I mean, so we don't know how deceptive it really was, Kevin, because it only fooled you and I. You know, when I was doing minor league baseball, my very first home run call, I called like it was way out and it ended up being off the top of the fence. <laughs> <laughs> so that had a lot of similarities to it right there. So that'll be on the uh, low light reel <laughs> for me. But it will be first and 10 for Crooksville. Their offense gets their final instruction from their head coach, Casey Valley. This will be Crooksville's uh, first opportunity to take a, a two-score lead. But the Morgan defense has played well when they have needed to. Let's see how they respond here. Miller. Fakes it, looks to run it himself, and he'll split some defenders and more, and he may go. Good backside help as hustling down the field was Adam Nicewanger. Boy, that's a that's a play design because Cade Miller's the athlete that he is. But, you know, he kind of ran out of steam. He has yes, been he playing on both sides of the football, 
And he got down here. It looked like he might outrun folks and actually got a little bit of a fist fight down there with Colton Young. Young did a good job to hang him up. Yep. And then Nicewanger cleaned things up. But a big play for Crooksville nonetheless. And Miller going to come out and we'll get Noah Dickerson back in there. Dickerson just a sophomore. Here's the bubble screen and first player misses, second player misses, and then a bunch of folks will come out and help. A yard on the play could have been a loss. I don't think Colt White has ever expended as much effort as he has for a one yard gain than, than that play right there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And not a, I don't even know if they even gave him a yard on him. I mean, he just barely got back to the line of scrimmage. I yeah, mean, that was nearly an interception. Yeah, it is second down and 10 just to the line of scrimmage where his knee went down. Now Morgan is playing that bubble screen much more aggressively than he did early in the game. Dickerson going to fake that throw out to the left, carry it, and go down hard as Newman, who's been around the ball all night long, in on the play, that along the, with Wade Pauley. Same play that. Caden Miller ran for the, the big uh, the big gain here on first down of this drive. And actually, Except Brady White in there too. But it's just to the opposite side. So third down and about seven. I think they're going to let this clock run down. Or can they? Do they have that much time? I don't see a play yeah, clock anywhere. Well, no, there isn't a play clock. The back judge will look to him for the five-second call. I think they're going to run one those. Yep. Miller back in there after taking a playoff. Looking to throw, and he'll get away from one tackler, a second tackler, throw against his body, incomplete, but a good job to not lose anything on that one. Clock stops with exactly 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, yeah, the rule used to be if your quarterback scrambles and you're deep, then you come to him. And if you're shallow, then go deep. And I, I don't see any of the receivers uh, coming back to him. Uh, I mean, that would have been – an ideal situation to give him some help. I think everybody's out of gas right well, at the I'm moment. Well, I'm telling you. Why? A lot oh, of two-way players out there. We're going to look here we go. for a field goal. It'll you be bet. a 38-yarder. Brady Brannon going to hold. Actually, about 37 where he lines up. Kicking it will be Zach McLean. Kick He's away. Plenty of leg. Did he get it through the upright? Yes. He did. Wow. 37-yarder coming with 5.4 nice seconds remaining in this third quarter. Just like that, the lead now 31-21. We'll take a timeout here in McConnellsville. Crooksville, a 10-point lead. McLean, the 37-yard field goal to put his team on top by 10. Hey, next week, Coach. We are going to see these same ceramics, but we're going to be in Crooksville. That's right. At the park as Coshocton comes to town. Coshocton can score some points. They can also give up some points. My old stomping grounds. Looking forward to that. And the return out near the 20. Crooksville fans into it across the way now that their squad's up by 10. Boy, that kick would have been good from, <laughs> it was good from 37, would have been good from 50. Well, you know I think there's an epidemic of Matt McIntyre's coaching in the NBL. <laughs> Matt, you know, does a little kicking uh, seminars, and uh, oh. well, he's improved the kicking oh, game in this what. conference for he sure in has. this league, as we said. That's the end of the third quarter. Morgan, a tall order when they come back, but they've been able to put some long plays together and see what they can do in the fourth quarter. 31-21, Crooksville in the lead here over Morgan. We get ready to start the fourth quarter here at Morgan. Next week, Coach, we're going to be back in your old stomping grounds in Crooksville non-conference game for the Ceramics as Coshocton comes to town. Yep, should be an interesting game. We'll know all the kids from Crooksville because they you know, have the advantage, uh, the rare advantage of having back-to-back uh, -back weeks for the same team. And Coshocton can score some points, but yes, they, they can, can also give up a couple. Well, we, uh, we're getting used to that tonight. Yeah, we are. Morgan with the ball, first and 10 to start this fourth quarter. Out here, down the field he goes, and a good catch. Is he still in bounds? He is. He may go. He's looking around, and then he'll jog. <laughs> that is Carson Mayo. That only goes for about 80 yards. 
Everything stopped like he was out of bounds, and then he goes, wait a minute, I'm still in bounds. Yeah, I think see, I'll head the other way. See, he was. So, uh, Colt White was on the coverage, and uh, so I guess turnaround is fair play. So it goes from out here to May. Oh, whoa, whoa. Yes, he. I think he hit the white line. But well, it's only out of bounds if you get caught. And no we've had was, a couple of those tonight. Yep, one no going one was, either way. And the no. kick is blocked. So it'll remain a four-point lead for Crooksville as the cannon sounds again at the Morgan Athletic Field. We'll take a timeout. 31-27. Morgan right back into it. Morgan gets a long touchdown pass from Altier to Mail and might have got a little break, too, from the officiating crew, but they took advantage. You bet. Well, you know, we, we knew neither team had a win coming in, but we were, really thought it might be a shootout type of game, and it, it definitely is. Onside kick attempt, fielded. Wow, and he goes right down. It's hit hard near midfield, but an alert play on that one for... Braden Carr. Yeah, Braden Carr. Nice job. Sophomore, heady play. Chase Bowman trying to sneak one by him right there. Took a chance there knowing that, you know, if it, if it backfires, then uh, he's going to give the ceramics good field position. They're going to start with the ball at, at their own 48-yard line. Short field. Crooksville up by four. Little fake wide open if he can catch it, and he does. And a long play followed by a long play as running it in. Thomas Russell, his first catch of the night. You know, that's that's one of the names we've not called for a reception. And uh, no better time to be called than when you're walking across the goal line. 52 yards on the pass play from Miller. And well, again, that's a good time to pick up your first catch of the evening. Coach Valley said that uh, Caden Miller had 900 yards coming into the game. He's going to have probably 1,800 yards going home. That's, that, some, that's how you. Has some people on the, uh, the Morgan team. Some of their players are in a little disagreement out there on the field. A little frustration out there, I'm sure, on the Raiders' part. And subs now in. Uh, referee's calling everybody together down there. Everybody's having a talk now, Kevin. Players and referees are having a talk together. I like that. Okay, fellas, f let me tell you what football's all about. You Maybe. think that's what there was going on? Well, with that? they're getting ready to rehearse Kumbaya. Ah, <laughs> oh, coach, you're killing me. Snap back, kick away. Plenty of leg. Did he get it through? He did. Yes, he did. Big leg tonight for Zach McClain. And we'll actually keep it right here because we just got some information. We're just staying because we got a window right behind us. Yes, we do. The fans are right with us, the Field screen level, right we're, behind we're us. Level. So the player that – I want to get this right, Jeremiah. The player that just scored, right? So it was Russell who just scored on the long pass. Thomas Russell, right. a junior. Just as he scored, his brother, who was in the military – arrived at the field, just came through the gate, saw the touchdown, and now we'll be able to surprise him. Oh does it get better than that? It does not. It does not. God bless his brother for serving uh, his country, and uh, that will be a great reunion tonight. So, again, hats off to the Russell family. And, uh, yeah, you just just meant to happen. That's all there is to it. That's his only catch of the night, and it goes <laughs> 52 yards for the score. Well, we had it timed up. You know, we, we rehearsed that uh, <laughs> Wednesday night. You know. We do everything we can up here yeah, to that, make things work. That's Hollywood now. So an 11-point lead, the biggest lead of the night. Very disheartening for the Raiders. Uh, you, you, you come back on a play where a guy misses a tackle and your receiver goes all the way down the field. You cut the lead to three, and now one play later, you're down 11. You know, we've had two touchdowns in this fourth quarter and have not yet played half a minute. 11.32 to go. I never thought of that. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, at this pace. At this pace. <laughs> it'll be about 140 at this pace, to 132. Had I, uh, had I paid attention in math class, I'd be able to tell you what the score was. Well, I'm, I'm a little distracting, and you got the 
you know, the pepper jelly working. And it's kind of a tough night to not be distracted, I'm just telling you. Yep. So Morgan, this will be a big drive here as they had cut the lead to just four, now find themselves down by 11. Two long passing plays to start this fourth quarter, both going for touchdowns. Well, if you're a defensive lineman, uh, you're going to really enjoy not getting out of bed tomorrow morning. That's it. It has been that kind of night. I'll tear back there. It's exhausting to rush the pass for that many times. And he'll look to throw again, avoids the rush, looking for help, and almost picked off. And again, trying to throw it across his body back to the middle of the field, and we're going to get a late flag. Was he across the line when he threw it? Well, we'll discuss it for a little bit, for sure. <laughs> I don't know. Do I sound do I sound upset? I mean, I gotta. I gotta well, I know you have a long drive home, Kevin. And, and, uh, well, that's not even it. I'm glad to be here, and I'll spend as much time as necessary. But with the, uh, I yeah. believe I'd I'd just make the call. Let's see what they're going to say. They're going to walk back to the middle. Slowly, still talking, and we're going to have a dead ball foul, and it's going to be unsportsmanlike conduct against Morgan. Wow. Costly penalty. It sure is, because dead ball foul is still going to be second down. Yes. All the way back to the 10-yard line on a half the distance. Major penalties have just crushed Morgan tonight. Yep. It, it hurt Several Crooksville times. early in this game, and Morgan as of late. So it'll be second down and 20 at a time when you're 11 points down. You know, at a time when you really have to maintain your poise, uh, this is no time to start having dead ball fouls and, and that kind of stuff. Remember the phrase we always used to hear my growing up was controlled violence. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to play hard. It's a, it's, it's, That's right. It is a violent sport, but you have got to know when to turn off the engine. Well, and Urban Meyer always just talks about that six seconds of – you know, active play right. of unrelenting play. Not seven seconds because that's a little too late. Altier looks left and comes right, but his receiver not able to hang on, intended for Carson Mayo, who just had the touchdown moments ago from 80 yards away. Make it third down and 20. Well, I, I can't get over the improvement from the first quarter to the fourth the Kirksville pass rush. I mean, they're uh, staying in their lanes. They're a little, doing a much better job of containing the quarterback most of the time. Well, I got to tell you, both defensive coordinators tonight have done a whale of a job in adjusting to what yeah. the other team was having some success with. Altier just could not find who he wanted. And staying on the football out there was Chris Pitcock. Speaking good of good time. defensive play. Good effort that time by Pitcock. That's a couple of tackles he's made tonight. He made the tackle on the big uh, screen pass uh, earlier in the game. It's a good hustle. So Morgan will look to punt it away. Brady Brandon waiting for the kick, and he's going to let it bounce. And it gets a Morgan bounce inside Crooksville territory, but Ceramic's less concerned about that at the moment. Right. Well, you know, I tend to rail on guys not catching punts. That's the exact time when you don't catch a punt. Don't yeah. give the team a, a chance for an easy turnover. And I will say this, both of these squads, they may be 0-4, but they have not played with effort that some might think 0-4 teams play with. These guys have been going full out all night long. And again, so many two-way players in a smaller school game like this. In fact, we had a chance to talk to both coaches this week about next year in the MVL and what they thought about that, and I think pretty uniformly the small schools will look forward to that. Right. I think so, too. And give themselves a little bit better shot at getting into the playoffs. So, Crooksville, they will now probably take advantage of some time. Nope, they're looking for, nope. a, home, looking for a home run, and it is a catch. All the way down inside the 25. So Ceramics not content to run down the clock. They went for the big play and got it. Well, you know, that's a disadvantage when you have to spread offense. You really can't do that kind of stuff. But two receivers in the same zone again, 
And, and it was that Colt White that came down with it? It was. And Miller just has that good of an arm. Clock will run now after the chains are placed. Great call. Got Morgan on their, on their heels. Miller going to run it. I think, well, I don't know if that was the intended call all along, but he made something out of it. Usually when you're running by yourself, that is not the called well, play. Well, I think he, that was the play when he made that big run here yeah. you know, at the end of the third quarter, so maybe it was. You know, they had Chapman running out into the, like, looked like for a left side screen, but Miller did not look that direction. So Well, you know, it's almost like a quarterback counter type, so almost yep. like a naked bootleg. You know, perhaps he's reading the middle linebacker, uh -huh. maybe went with the motion. Some pressure, Miller. Still looking, he'll throw, almost. Did he get it in there? Whoa. No. Almost intercepted out in front of it. Went through the hands of Kobe Hodge, and but it comes down the ground. Well, one of the, the, one that of those was more exciting. Ceramic receiver. See says there, you see Hodge right there. Oh, it's a, well over his, and then uh, it does it skip bounced. in there. Yeah. No, nope, I would say that. It's definitely an incomplete pass and possibly an Emmy award for the receiver. <laughs> oh, we have a penalty. Really? Roughing the passer. And, again, not when you need it. So we will – that will – half the distance will move it down to about the 11. Still can get a first down here. And the will run the ball. Little draw play and a touchdown. From 11 yards out, David Chapman takes it in with 9.25 still to go in this one. Boy, Kevin, I would say uh, Morgan has their, – their fire is about out. I mean, they, they were just on that play – their defense was just kind of standing around. I, I think they're really a disheartened bunch right now. And they played so hard tonight in different stretches. And they had the lead in the first half. I mean, in the first yes. drive of this second half. And the kick is good. Well, we'll take a timeout. 45-27, Crooksville stretching out the lead here at Morgan. Welcome back, WHIZ TV Game of the Week. Kevin Round, the coach, Doug Clifford. And after the Chapman touchdown run, the kick down to about the five yard line. Keeping his outside arm free. Good special team play on that one. Ethan Sprankle on this side of the field. And in, in coach speak, that's called breaking down when you're on defense on a kickoff team. Break down, keep your feet apart, your shoulders square. Uh, make the tackle. You know, a lot of the same school in basketball. When you run out to a player that you're guarding, you got to break down in front of them so they don't drive around you. I wouldn't know. Yeah, you would. <laughs> Stop it. If you keep doing that, now you are just setting me up for my annual tussle with coach to get him to do basketball games. I don't know anything about that. First down and 10 for Morgan. We could do some Morgan basketball games. They feed us in uh, basketball like they oh, did tonight. My gosh. I'll be there every game. I'm gonna, but I'm pleading for the food to take home next time. <laughs> First down and ten for Morgan, finding themselves behind now by 18 points, and well, this is a great no time room to, to run right now. And this is a great time to be a defensive coordinator because you can just draw up every little blitz you, that's in the defensive playbook. Here they come from the outside. The guys stay in their lanes on the inside. Excellent pass rush. Tyler Carr's been. Getting in from that outside edge a lot tonight and didn't get the tackle, but put some pressure on early. Well, Coach Valley was really hopeful that the return of his big man on the inside uh, would, you know, tip the scales in their favor. And, and those guys on the defensive line have done a great job tonight for the ceramics. Altier, let's see if he looks to throw. He does. Quick pass out into the flat, but in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Colton Young. So we got some scores here, Coach, as we watch the replay of that one. I'm going to save the big one for last, but Sheridan gets the win over West Ham. West Ham, of course, got their first win right. in several years last week, but they fall tonight to Sheridan 56-18. Sheridan, as we'll find out here in a minute, 
may be the only T undefeated team in league play. John Glenn beats Maysville as they follow up uh, last week's big win at Philo with a win. win at Maysville, 36-13, John Glenn. But then the big one, Philo goes out to Tri-Valley, and we talked about how they needed to bounce back like John Glenn bounced back, and they did indeed with a 27-17 win out of Tri-Valley. Good defense there. Yes, it was. And Excellent That was defense. Rambo knocking it away. So Tri-Valley gets a loss in league play as Philo plays them tough. Sheridan, the only team undefeated in league play. Of course, we saw their one loss of the season, a non-conference game against Licking Valley. So now, and there's about 100 teams with one loss. The target goes squarely on the back of the Sheridan Generals. And, well, of course, we've got their game out there against Tri-Valley later in the season. Yep. So something tells me that's going to be a big one. Oh, baby. Fourth down for Morgan. They'll look to kick it away. And good kick. And no fair catch. He's going to see what he can get. White with it. And we'll get another penalty flag. Tell you what, these referees are going to have to ice their arms down. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're going to have to buy some new hankies. So I'm, we'll see what the infraction was. And it will be a block in the back against Crooksville. So that's a big win for Philo Electrics tonight, Coach, especially on the road out of Tri-Valley. I was really impressed with is it Hunter Adolph, their quarterback? Uh -huh. I was impressed with him. Uh, I was impressed with the way they fought back in the John Glenn game and just came up a couple plays short. I mean, they were driving for the winning score at the end of the game. And, and had a pass knocked and, away and at the very end. Pass was stripped at the very end. That would have been a, a first down, goal to go. Uh, and, you know, they, they could be sitting. Uh, well, and you know who they got next week? Sheridan. That's right. To talk about a big game next week. And yeah, I'm sure that the Philo and Sheridan. The coaching staff at Philo will be telling their guys, see how good you can be. And how well you played at John Glenn in the second half tonight. Yep. First and ten, Crooksville. And they're gonna try to probably run some clock here a little bit as in the game a quarterback is Dickerson, the sophomore. Boy Miller, he is He's played about three games tonight, so they get him out of there for a little bit. Chapman, who just ran for the touchdown, gets the handoff. Right now, the ceramics don't need points. They just need ticks. Run the clock. the clock. Run, Run the, the clock. So, again, just going through those scores one more time for you. Sheridan over West Muskingum, 56-18. John Glenn gets Maysville, 36-13. to And Philo, big win out of Tri-Valley, 27-17. Again, uh, they'll take their time. Back judge puts up his hand for the five seconds. Well, that looked like an example of what you talked about earlier, Kevin, where the, the running back kind of got ahead of his blockers that time. It looked like there's some pretty decent blocking ahead of him there, and he runs kind of outside of him. But, uh, well, you know, it's funny. We've kind of seen people split in two camps yeah. this year. They go with Le'Veon Bell and wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Or they just yeah. hit the ground running. And But right now, I'm sure that Coach Valley and, and the coaching staff for Crooksville is thinking, we don't care if you gain a foot. Just hang on yeah, to the just football. Do not fumble. Hang on to the ball. So Noah Dickerson, the guy we'll probably see the next couple of years after this. Good call by Noah. He's going to tuck it, get it. Let's see if he stays in bounds. Oh, he's going to go out of bounds. But another penalty flag. So it doesn't really matter. Well, it looks like we're going to have some, something, uh, I'm going to say a block on the back maybe. Yeah, let's maybe watch. a hold. Tell that? you what, though, Dickerson's got some speed. Yes, he does. Looking, looking, and maybe a hold right there is what the call is going to be. And that is indeed what the call is, about where the flag was. That's a, Trouble with that is if you're not in front of the referee right there, you probably, because your hands are inside, usually you don't get that call. In our day, Coach, you had to block with your elbows out. Uh -huh. You remember those days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think, man, if I only had that ability to get inside and hold on to a jersey or two inside, it would have been a new day. I know. My uh, my brother is an offensive lineman and uh, coached at, at Portion High School for years and years. and He just thought that was uh, his – Explanation was about time when they, they 
did away with that kind of blocking. Oh, yeah. Wait, you just and you beat up your arms doing all that stuff. Well, it's an you know, incomplete pass. That was back in the day when teams ran the ball, uh, you know, 75% of the time. If you threw the ball 14 or 15 times a game, you were a wide-open offense. So it'll be fourth down and five. Crooksville hasn't punted much tonight, but their uh, backup quarterback, quarterback on that drive, Noah Dickerson, is their punter. Boy, look at the players on both sides. They're, they're spent. <laughs> they're just walking to where they have to get to. I mean, they're just exhausted. Yeah. Both teams have played exceptionally hard tonight. And that's what we've seen in the MVL for a long time. These teams play full out all the time. Oh, nice pat, punt coverage. Hustling down the field. And nice Wonger, I believe, was a receiver, but he was hit right away. Tyler Rambo. Nice He's job. He's been playing all night, too. He just didn't get to town. <laughs> no. Nope, not at all. So Morgan will have it, but a tall order, 6.09 remaining in this one. 45-27, as we mentioned, we'll see these Crooksville Ceramics next week on the other grass field in the MVL. Yep. At the Village Park. It'll take them that long to <laughs> recover from this game. I'd say take the next few days off, oh, fellas. Buddy. They'll face a Coshocton team that will score a bunch, but may give up a touchdown or two. So should be exciting. Whoa. And we're going to get... They didn't want to call the penalty. I that know. was the most reluctant <laughs> on the most obvious penalty all night. Referee goes, ah, if I don't call it, can we just keep going? And it'll be on Crooksville as the Morgan player reacted to the well, premature rush. It is, but it will go as a discussion-free penalty. I don't know. I think they wanted to. <laughs> they, they really wanted to. But, no, they got that was the right call. And we said they made the right calls tonight. We've had a couple of – Plays that might have been out of bounds that they allowed to proceed, but and we're going to get and see. Do they say it was out of bounds? Yep. Yes, the, the referee crew's done a great job tonight. They've, uh, I think, they've really tried to protect the players, the, the late hit situations and stuff like that. Uh, if your biggest complaint is they took too long to be right, well, then you don't have yeah, much to not, complain about. Yeah, you're exactly right. I know. Right now, uh, I was talking to my uh, old college roommate, Dave DeLugas. Uh, he was the head coach of Avon Lake for years, and uh, he said the OHSAA recently sent a letter to all the schools telling, uh, asking the schools to really tell their fans to take it easy on the referees because they're running out of referees. Yeah. Guys don't want to do the job. Guys aren't signed, and not only in football, but other sports as well. Pass in the flat, it'll be incomplete. Make it third down. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I, I have uh, – Given some serious thought to go back to umpiring next year because they are out of people. Oh, I bet. And not that I would be, you know, I've, I've done my fair share of it, but, you know, you just feel bad that you want the players to be out there with, oh. you know, people that can call the games. And my, I will uh, say that is one of the big differences from our time to now. The fans are a lot more involved in terms of feeling like they have to have their say. I mean, there, there were a number of people in our day that did. But usually they knew when. Now it's almost, well, there's some places it can be every play. And referees, why why do it? So we're both glad that these guys have. So well, There's a sack. So we, we kid them with affection when we talk about our friends, the referees. I've had some lonely moments as a high school umpire, I will tell you right <laughs> now. There have been some moments. <laughs> so I get it. I understand. But well, Ethan Sprinkle's sack of the quarterback that on a third down makes it fourth down, about 12 it looks like. And, and uh, I don't see the punt team coming out. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna go for it, try to make something happen. Well, Tears gone all night. He's going to go all down the field. Good arm, but too good that time as it gets by everybody. And Crooksville will take over on downs with 5-12. Again, I, I, I need to say it one more time, and that is I admire the effort of these players. We, you know, One of the games we noted it in was our trip out to West Muskingum, and you saw how that then paid off when they got the win last week because they played the entire game down by a lot of points. Yep, yep. And, you know, it's just a common theme that uh, players in the MVL that we see, and especially this year so far, 
they played all four quarters no matter what the score. Well, I admire every young man that plays football today. It's a it's a difficult sport. It, it requires great sacrifice. And I really appreciate the effort for young men who are in programs that are trying to uh, you know, rebuild a team or their program. Teams that have to struggle for you know every week, week in, week out, because that, that's tough. That's a, this is a difficult sport to not be able to win. Chapman, the football. Now, I will say this. Crooksville was nice enough to run it. Uh, Morgan did bring the blitz. <laughs> so maybe that will change. <laughs> that's kind of one of those unwritten deals. If you're going to blitz, we are going to throw it. Second down, and well, we'll see how they do it. I think Miller's back in the game. And Is he? No. No. It was a 22 I saw. I think it was 22. Yep. So Dickerson going to hang on to it himself. He's got a little bit of running room. And he'll be tied up and thrown to the ground. Clock will continue to run as we get closer to four minutes. You know, this is a, 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 an odd game for the ceramics all the time that I coached. Our players that lived in, in Crooksville, they weren't too fired about Morgan being a rival, but our players that lived in the Portersville area mm -hmm. and in the Bearfield Township where I live, this was their big game. I mean, because they could look across the, the property line and see the guys they're going to play against. And it was very heated. For some, we had a couple of kids on our team. Uh, Sean Hinkle, we <laughs> we thought we were going to have to give him sedatives to calm him down because he wanted he. This was the biggest game of the year for him. He lived in Portersville. There's they the throw. They will look to throw. Oh, there's a catch. No, in and out of his hand. Oh. That might have been the second touchdown of the night for Russell, but he just couldn't quite haul it in. So it'll be fourth down. Clock stops, 3.40 to go. I think there's a piece of cloth on the there field. There is again. Let's see what it is. And it's uh, illegal li or alignment downfield yep. illegally. It's, the, uh, it's declined. I wondered about that. I think that's going to make it fourth down, isn't it? Yep. Do you kick a field goal, get your guy in a little more I'd experience? I'd kick a field goal right now. i either take a kick a field goal or take a knee. Uh, and I, I would kick a field goal here not to run the score up. Just but practice. Because, that's right. You don't know what point in, in a year you're going to kick a field goal to win a game. But there, uh, the field goal team's not coming out. Of course, he did hit one earlier tonight. Yes, he did. From 37 yards out, we're talking about the Crooksville junior, Zach McLean. So fourth down and five. And they're going to look to blitz. throw. Got a receiver end zone and a bounce incomplete. And Morgan will take over on downs as Dickerson tried to force one in there under some pressure. Well, he threw it before either receiver had turned uh, and had it had a little more uh, air under it. That could have been a touchdown, but the receiver turned, saw the ball, but it just kind of bounced at his feet. And we've got another discussion going on here. We got another penalty. Yep, called by the umpire right behind the line. Actually, side judge came in through that one. And it's going to be holding against Morgan, oh. which means a first down. Because I think. When it rains, it pours. Yeah, boy. And so that will take it down to the six, and that'll be first and goal for Crooksville. But again, the big game tonight. Philo wins at Tri Valley 27 to 17. Only one undefeated team left in MVL play, and that's sharing it. A lot of clean jerseys in there for the ceramics. Let's see what happens here. Like some pups are getting a chance to play. Yes, they are. And a throw over the middle, incomplete. Is it All intercepted? Right. I believe it is. It is. In and out of the hands of one player into the hands of another, and that's Kobe Hodge pulling it down. Kobe's played a good game tonight. He's he been, has. been the man in the right place at the right time on several occasions. He caught a touchdown pass tonight. as well, Actually, a couple of passes. An eight-yarder in the first quarter, then a 35-yarder in the third quarter. Made some nice tackles on defense. Uh, returned some kickoffs. 
he's one of those guys that'll be exhausted. Oh my. Well, I think that's something else. I think guys uh, who coach at big schools don't realize. If you take, just say, Kobe Hodge, he's not the star of the team. But if you take Kobe Hodge out of the lineup, you have to oh. replace him with about four guys. Yeah, Offense, that's right. Defense, that, kicking game. Uh, that's, that is well said because that, that is exactly yeah. right. You know, uh, that's uh, that's tough. I mean, you, you know, the kids at West Coast game, they're in the same situation. Altier looking to throw it. And he'll try to find him across the way. It'll be intercepted. Yes, it is. One more time by Brody Brandon. He's talking about another guy who's had a big night tonight. Yep. And Altier. Altier just loves throwing it back to the middle of the field. <laughs> I will say that for him. And, you know, he's trying to make something happen. So you can't fault him for that. That's but right. That's right. A couple of Crooksville guys there. Ethan, Ethan Sprankle was just bearing down on him. Uh, missed him the first time and came back around and was right behind him as he threw the football. So, uh, yep, a lot of nice uh, clean jerseys out there for the ceramics. Some young guys getting to uh, get some action in on the line. I see number 66 in there. Dylan Dutro. Uh, who else might be in there? 75, Lane Kenny. Uh, we'll try to get some more for you. We have some uh, some of the usual suspects that are still out there, though. Braden Cavaney's still out there, and so is Thomas Russell. And on the running play, Trevor Bowen, sophomore. And we're going to get a timeout called by Moore. Give us a chance to catch our breath before we get to the stretch run. 45-27, Crooksville leads it here at Morgan. After the timeout, 3.10 left to go in this fourth quarter. Kevin Rao and the coach, Doug Clifford. Crooksville with the football second and 10. Another new back in there getting to run the football. On it was Braden Carr, just a sophomore. And coach, so I got one. We'll talk about this during this timeout as one more taken by Morgan. So the final score tonight, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to hesitate. Well, no, I am hesitating. New Lexington in their non-conference game beat Coshocton tonight. Coshocton we'll see next week at Crooksville. Final score, New Lexington 82, Coshocton 60. Well, you know, I, talk, I talked with Coach Board at New Lexington, and I, and I was really impressed with his, his knowledge of the game and his offensive, uh, you know, just – IQ of the game is just tremendous. But I'm going to, have to go down and have another talk with him and tell him, you're allowed to play 11 on defense. It's not against the rules. You know, so here's the thing, though. And New Lex, boy, they'd like to have that Maysville game back again, wouldn't they? Oh, my, yes. Yeah, yeah. So the teams we will see next week, as of this moment, have a combined this week of 105 points. <laughs> Oh, that's ugly. We may see a little offense down there. We may, I'm telling you, you might want to get a cot and a tent because we may be there for a while. Stay in bounds. Uh, he's not, not listening. Then it goes out of bounds. And well, we got another flag. Well, I, they're probably going to call late hit, but I did see. Uh, I thought he let loose. I did too. I, I saw Dan Tokai in on the tackle, but I saw him help the guy up on the sideline. I didn't see anybody on the Kirksville side, uh, you know, all upset or anything. So, well, what we got here? What we got? Well, they're backing up the other way. Coach. Yeah, I think it's going to be motion. You know, it, it did look a little uh, unprepared. So we want to let folks know too. If you if you don't know this, of course, you're seeing this replay uh, Saturday morning uh, or on YouTube later because we're now available on YouTube after the game. Um, but having said all that, we, you and I are doing a live thing now before the game. So if you're on the WHIZ website, you can see us mm -hmm. a little at 640 uh, before the game to figure out what's going on for the, uh, for the game coming up. And then after the game, in just a little bit, we'll be doing another live feed with highlights and talking about the game. So that was actually yesterday after the game. <laughs> but next week you can watch it all. 
Well, I'm confused. Just stay here. Just stay in the booth, and we'll just do it all. I was confused when I got here. (laughs) We did not elucidate you following that. (laughs) But you did get food out of tonight. Let's just remember this now. Oh, baby. They love you here at Morgan. I have a lot of friends over here, and I've been coming over here for a long time. Well, you said you just look over the fence. Just about. Yeah. Some nice people over here. No, they've been – you know what? I enjoy coming down here. I I just – People are great. This is a beautiful field. Just reminds me of just old time yep. football, which near and dear to my heart. So 2:45 on the clock. Crooksville, the commanding lead. They get some new guys in there. That ball, their DBs have similar familiar numbers, and the pass out in the flat incomplete. So next week, coach, we better rest rest your pipes before you get to the field because. Holy smokes. And new Lex, 82 points. But you know, and you think, oh, they ran up the score. No, there's, yeah. it's still a game. I mean, you know. 82 to 60. So, what do you tell your defense? You played a great game. You only gave up 60. But you won. I mean, that's that's all it counts. Of, it, all it counts is W or L. How the many? points are in, insignificant. Yeah. W or L. But that's I'm a sure, W. I'm sure there'll be uh, – I, be I some can't discussion. Wait see, can't wait to see Keshockton. Yeah, they must have a whale of an offense, but long pass. It'll go out of bounds. Almost picked off. Just about uh, Isaac, Isaac down there running camera Isaac three. Isaac should have had that. I mean, I'm a little disappointed. Man. If he'd have laid out, I think he'd have got it. Well, he should have been like those guys on, on Sunday when I see the guy come off the side and they just hold that spot and then they just get ran over. I know. Colt White was a defensive back for – Crooksville over there, and he had a little something to say to Isaac. He might have challenged him a little bit. <laughs> we'll have to find out about that. Isaac, now next week, Isaac will move back to the truck, right? Yep. Timmy we say goodbye to uh, uh, Ryan Bradford, who's been running our instant replay last few games. We, we appreciate his help. And Isaac's doing done a good job on camera three. That is a tough assignment. Pass incomplete in and out of the hands. Of course, we've got Tom up here running camera one tonight. John, is John up on the roof tonight? Okay, John's on the roof with camera two. Jeremiah's working the scoreboard to our left here in the booth. I notice that Jeremiah and I always end up in the same place when there's food here. I think that's what we do well. We kind of gravitate. Although, no, I don't. Jeremiah, did you get any food to take home? The answer is no, Coach. And coach, coach is showing off the mason jars up here. <laughs> Clock stop 229, 45 27. Crooksville, the big lead after a very close game in, in this one, actually through the third quarter. Crooksville got rolling in the third quarter, but about a minute in, the first drive of, that, of the second half, Morgan had the 21 20 lead. Well, you know. Crooks is going to take it, take home uh, the victory tonight. They may be too tired to celebrate. I mean, you're there. Yeah, I think this is, and they have, don't they have a, a victory bell at we Village have, Park? Yeah. So yeah. you go there, you ring it like one guy. You just send him off the bus. Just go ring the thing <laughs> real quick, and then we're going to go. That thing, that thing uh, <laughs> used to travel. And uh, I came over and saw a couple of Crooksville games when I, I was coaching uh, – other schools like come here and see a playoff game, and then that, that bell traveled. I don't believe it's in Morgan County tonight, though. No, is it it yeah. doesn't travel anymore. And Crooksville running the football, it's time will wind down, and Morgan going to take their final time out. We're going to keep it right here as Coach Bowman. Now, I'll tell you, I, what I, I, I had a chance to talk to him this week, Coach, Coach Bowman, and mm-hmm. he really impressed me. Uh, Great attitude. Right. Knows knows the challenge that he faces here is is equal to it. I think if you can if he can get a little bit of depth and he gets a little more time under his belt as the league tran, you know transitions into a big and small division. Right. I have a lot of faith in well, Coach you know, Bowman, I gotta tell you. He's facing the same challenge that Coach Valley is at Kirksell. Uh he's the head coach of a, of a team that Hasn't had any success for quite a while. And when things go wrong, instead of your team, you know, 
sucking it up and saying, okay, here's what we have to do. There's a tendency to say, well, here we go again. Right. And, that's right. And that, you know, that's tough. That's tough to overcome. But Coach Bowman was an outstanding player and, as I say, just an outstanding young coach who I think will end up having a lot of success here at Morgan. I hope so. Of course, you know Coach Valley on the other side of the field, and you know that tenacity is not lacking no, over there in terms of having his guys hang with it. He wanted to be – he thought the worst they would be at this point was going to be 2-2. Two and two. They'd still have a shot. But he's told his guys, you win out, you never know what can happen. That's and right. they have played that way tonight. Well, they have the skilled players as good as anybody we've seen. Well, their yeah. defense tonight, once it got yeah. – going except for a short field on the first couple drives yeah. and then a long pass play. But I mean they're they're cast of skilled players. I they I can't think of a team we've seen that has a quarterback and those kind of receivers go with it. Uh, so they have a potent offense. Combined with the defense that right. we've seen. Yeah. That's right. So that's a third down play. I think we'll be fourth down now as we're inside a minute to go. So Morgan may get it back for a moment. But it's going to be Crooksville coming away with their first win of the season. And, again, we will have their game next week at Crooksville, although we'll be in a different press box from the last time I was there. I was there quite a while ago. <laughs> That's right. We're on the wrong side now. So <laughs> I, 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 uh, there's I just, no wrong side in Crooksville. I mean, I, I, mean I, can't get, I just can't get used to being on that side of the field, but – uh, they Did switch they switch that? up where the teams were as well, right? So, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because the teams are always in front of the yeah. home press box. Yeah, the old press box is what I remember yeah. going up in there. Right. So we'll be there next week. I hope that you'll join us. and remind you that at 640 Friday night, we'll be live on the Wiz website with the pregame. And actually, they're going to allow them to run out the clock. That is going to do it tonight. Coach, really kind of the tale of early and late in this one as Morgan had their way yep. early, but Crooksville responded. When they responded, they responded on both sides of the football. Yes, they did. I, I'm very impressed with the ceramics. Congratulations, Coach Valley and your, and your staff, players. Uh, every victory is great, especially when it's your first. Well, we'll see you next week at Crooksville as Coshocton comes to town. That ought to be a – Scoring affair. We hope that you will join us then. Our final score here tonight at Morgan Athletic Stadium, 45-27, Crooksville over the Morgan Raiders. For my broadcast partner, the coach, Doug Clifford, I'm Kevin Rowe. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Brian. It was a scoring fest, especially in the second half tonight, 45-27. to The win goes to Crooksville here at Morgan Coach, and Morgan had the advantage early, but then Crooksville just kind of sped away. Well, they did. The short field uh, drives by Morgan, and then uh, that great catch by Brandon got Crooksville you know, going again. And, uh, and uh, you know, the Stramwicks just didn't give up. Cavaney on the lateral and then the pass. He finds Brandon, and Brandon off to the races. As well-designed play got Crooksville into the end zone again and got him into the ball game. Miller who can run it as well as he throws it, and he finds the end zone here on a hard hit. Oh, he powers his way into the end zone. Nice swanger. Tried to stop him, but couldn't quite. Altier for Morgan in a quarterback last week, started tonight. And there he finds Hodge for the touchdown. A lot of passes in this one tonight, Coach. Oh, my goodness. This he, is the one that hit the pylon. White on the catch from Miller that time. Cole White. And Crooksville jumped into the lead and then kind of worked it out. Now, Morgan was not to be denied. The pass to Mail here and might have got a little help on the call. It's maybe a toe on the line, but he gets, pulls it in in traffic and then gets <laughs> to the end zone. And they might, I think they were so tired that he was just glad to have the play be over. He was saving energy for later in the game. Miller then. And he finds Russell, and Russell's brother in the military surprised him later, got here just in, si in time to see that touchdown. And then there's Chapman, rounds out the scoring with the nine-yard touchdown run. And tonight, Coach, again, 
looked like Morgan might run away and hide, but Crooksville just stayed with it, stayed with it, able to get the win on the road. Well, it was. Dude. It, it, was. it was a great game. Both teams come in winless. Crooksville goes home with the win. And, and Coach go got free goodies. food. Uh. Not me. Coach. <laughs> That'll do it. Back to Friday Night Blitz. <laughs> 